Oh, we're just bringing her around here. Yeah, my little pet. Ready for walkies. Bitch. What's she had for her breakfast? Uh, she's had a full tin of meat and uh, I've given her an egg that Don left. Hey, it wasn't a fried egg. No, it was boiled. Oh, well, so long as you don't give her any fat side. Are you sure you took all the shell off? Yes, and I served it on the best silver. It's a dog order. It's used to crunch in bones. She may get somewhat stuck in her throat. Well, the champagne will wash it down, won't it? Come on. Where are you taking her? On the wreck. Where are you? Oh, well, listen, just make sure she don't go in traffic. Oh, of course I'm going to let her chase the buses. Listen, I'll see you later on at Romans tonight, OK? I'll get her some liver. It's good for her fur. Right. Come on. Hey, that dog's looking a bit chubby, you know. Yes, well, fat is in the eye of the beholder, Alf. And in some, not just the eye. Yeah, well, if you're taking it training, don't take a stopwatch, take a calendar. <laughs> Look, talking of calendars, Alfie, how long are we expecting that lodger of yours to stay in the shop flat? Eh? Well, I've been thinking, Alfie, while I'm out now, I think you should state your case plainly. What's that about, then? Well, that the arrangement were only temporary that Bet should start looking for somewhere else to spread herself and what with the redecorating, the flat's going to cost a lot more a week. But it isn't redecorated. That's why we want her out quickly, so we can start on it. And it's off to battle. How do I look? Oh. Like a knight in shining armour. I thought you were Mavis. Uh, no, she'd just gone for some tea bags. Ah. Well, first day at the office then, Derek? Yes. Except it's not an office. Oh, no, I mean, that's just a phrase. So where's your first port of call, then? Oh, somewhere locally, I think. Uh, not too far, anyway. Uh, just testing the water, you know. One of the advantages of being my own boss. <laughs> well, almost. Ah! Oh, Derek, you look splendid. <laughs> like a knight in shining uh, Yes, all right, Mavis. <laughs> if you find any damsels, just make sure you leave them in this dress. <laughs> When will you be home? Well, I can't say. If there's an iron that's hot, I'll have to strike it, no matter what the time is. Doesn't matter. I'll be waiting whatever time it is. Wish me luck. Good luck, Derek. <laughs> uh, good luck, Derek. What is he selling? It's not selling, Rita. It's merchandising. You'd be amazed at the number of things that are to merchandise. Do you want some tea now? I've got it. Ah, go on then. Hey, I'm sorry, Bet. I've come at an awkward time. How were you to know it's my first day in a new job? Anyway, I'm glad to see you. Some landlords just stick folk in the flats, take the money and forget them. Ah, well, that's not my style, Bet. Well, no, it's not. If ever I need a fuse changing or a bulb swapping, you're there, aren't you? Yeah, you are. Well, Pass me bag, will you, Alf? Eh? Hey? Oh. Ta, love. Oh, it's good to know. I've got a mate to turn to in a crisis. Hey, about this crisis, it is just temporary, isn't it? Do you know something I don't? Yeah, well, I mean, you and, and Alec going your separate ways like it, it's not, not for good. Separate homes, separate jobs, sounds like separate ways to me. And now he's moved his snake charmer in, he doesn't need me, does he? He'll come round, I'm sure he will. Oh, will he? Well, I won't. No, you could be taking rent off me for a very long time. Ah, oh, well, the thing is, you see, Audrey thinks this place needs redecorating again. Oh, thank Audrey for me, Alf, but... Tell her not to go chucking her money round on my account. I need to settle in a place first before I decide who I want it. Oh, come on now, shift. I'm going to be late for my appointment with Fia. Where are you off to? Flying anyway? arse, although if you knew the landlady, you'd call it a flaming cow. Oh. Hi. Hello. How's the training going? Well, she does seem a bit sluggish. You know, Ivy, she feeds her too much. Still, I'll take her out again this afternoon. Oh, well, look who's here. Audrey, I've just told Al, not just yet. Let me settle in first, but thanks anyway. Look at the size of her. She'll be boxing you <laughs> in a bit. <laughs> you wait. Anyway, I can't yes. stop. Working girls, you know how it is. See ya. Oh, hey, and thanks again, Al. Yeah, bye-bye, mate. Hey, what we're all that about? Hey. Let me settle in first. Thanks again. Oh, she's got all that wrong in that stick. What stick? Oh, does she's just been thrown out of her home. You don't want me to chuck her on the street, do you? I mean, you wouldn't even do that to that thing. She hasn't been chucked out of her home, Alf. She left of her own accord. Yeah, don't flip him blame her either. Oh, he's a difficult man. I wouldn't be surprised if Bet knew exactly what Alf was on about. Of course she did. It's just a soft touch. Come on, darling. Let's go for your rest. Bye, girl. Bye, Bye. sweetheart. 
Morning, Audrey. Morning, Mike. How's Rin Tin Tin? Oh! <laughs> Morning, girl. Hi, Mike. Have you got a minute? Yeah. Uh, I wanted some advice. Oh, yeah? Hmm. It's about the cafe. I've been offered a partnership and... Mm, uh... Tricky things, partnerships. Yeah. How's business? All right. Well, it could do better. I've been in the place in Yonks. Look, I'll tell you what, meet me there at five o'clock tonight. I'll tell you what I think of it then, okay? Thanks, Mike. Might even buy you a donut. <laughs> Good luck, Of course, you're only too familiar with bar work, aren't you, Mrs. Gilroy? So I don't expect you'll need training. I don't think so. Of course, here at the Flying Horse, we're a clean pub. We have a different type of client from yours at the Rovers, and I hope you'll get used to that. And I do like breakages and spillages to be cleared immediately. And I do hate dirty ashtrays, Mrs Gilroy. So when you see one, get rid, won't you, dear? I always do. Do you? My other concern is familiarity. I don't like my stuff to be too free with customers. Conversation's fine, but not the constant banter that flies across the bar in some establishments. We have a particular style here, Mrs Gilroy. Look, you call me Betty. Well, if you don't mind. Well, I'd mind it less than Mrs Gilroy. Don't you like your name, dear? It's fine. It's just a bit formal, isn't it? Yes. I suppose in the present circumstances there are other reasons you don't like being called Mrs Gilroy, aren't there? Would you wipe round the bar tables, dear? Then we'll be ready to open. Use a clean cloth. Excuse me. Are you paying very much? No, but if you're offering, you carry on. What? Do you know when I'm boss here, she is going. You know, I want it all oldie worldy. Mm. You can get that, what's it called? Uh, bottle glass and windows and plastic beams. You know that you glue to the ceiling. My host of the rovers, Vera. I can just see it, can you? Yeah, you can do ever so much, you know, with plastic. Mm. Oh, our shields, sorts of armour and that. We could have medieval nights, couldn't we? Girls dancing on the table. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how much they'll value our house that tomorrow. Tell you what, kid, a lot more than any other house in this street. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Jack, when we do this place up, we'll have done a lot to improve this area. It's called vision, Vera. Some have it, most don't. Hey, you're pacing up here. Who's that? It's called Nigel Ridley. I met him in the brewery. Oh. Ah, good morning, Mr. Nigel. <laughs> Have you met the wife? Oh. <laughs> oh, hey, you've escaped. Well, I hold a key, don't you? What are you doing here? Well, I only had a few minutes, so I thought rather than wade into a hot pot and out the other side, I'd come in here and have something light. Like. Yeah, my thinking precisely, honey. I don't have time to sit down. I'm going to take something away. But what? Aren't you virtuous? Well, no, more like. Panic, actually, with the Gazette giving this free paper out, I could be deep in what is politely known as the mire. So I'm going to spend all day on the phone to my advertisers. Well, you know what that's a recipe for, don't you? Ulcers? I've got it in one. Yeah. Not much of a choice, is it? Ulcers or poverty? I'll grab a sandwich. All right. right. Hello, I have a ham and salad sandwich here. No, my second thought is make it two. Are all's all right? Uh, yeah, anything you got, just shove it on the plate and hand it over. There, what's the damage? They're not damaged. <laughs> I mean, how much? Oh, 60 each. 60 each. There we are. 120 for cash. Thank you. Christine, love, can you, can you try and be a bit more friendly? That, that gentleman was obviously trying to talk to you. You hardly said a word to him. Well, he was in a rush. No, but that doesn't mean you have to ignore him. I mean, pass the time of day with people. You've got a pleasant personality. Try and use it a little. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Wilson. Have you, have you come for your cake? Yes. Oh, well, they're all boxed and ready. Christine, would you get Mrs. Wilson cake for her? Are they, uh, are they for a special occasion? Well, it's my husband's first day in a new job, so it's a little celebration. Oh, well, I'm sure he'll like that. Uh, what, uh, what is his job? Um, how much are they? Two thirty-five. Uh, what, uh, what, what is his job? But he's in merchandising. I'm afraid it's got to be a five pound. Oh, no, that's fine. What, uh, what sort of merchandising? Well, general, you know. Oh, what would you get to put the change for? Does that, does that mean he's, uh, he's a salesman? Well, he's a sales executive. Oh, general merchandising. Well, that does sound mysterious. Well, nothing mysterious about it. I mean, it's only a mystery because you keep asking questions. I only came in for my cakes. Come on, Christine. 
What is it about these women? Eh? You tell them that their husbands need feeding and they'll say, so what? You tell them that the mutt wants its dog and mate and they like to Moscow. <laughs> Cheers. Look, I'm telling you, Tina, how do I know who he is? He's just a smart-looking young man, that's well, all Why were you know. crawling all over him when he came in? I was just being civil, that's all. You, know, you go and serve him, and I'll, I'll sort these bottles. Yes, please. Would it be possible to have a word with Mr Gilroy? Is he in? Yes. Who should I say wants him? Nigel Ridley. I'm marketing manager for Newton and Ridley's Brewery. Oh, oh, right, I see. Um, can you just hang on? Just having a quiet look around, are you, Mr. Ridley? Is that right? Oh, I like to visit all our outlets from time to time. I'm going to pick the right time to visit this one. You think so? Well, as I said before, not as good as a wink for a blind horse. Hello, Nigel. What an unexpected pleasure. Hello, Alec. Welcome. Can I get you a drink, a scotch? Oh, I've had a mineral water, thanks. I wondered if I might have a private word. Of course. Of course. Come right through. Cheers. So, come on then. What have you done with Jenny? She's up to her eyes in it, isn't she? In what? Exams. English, Lit and Chemistry. Oh, aye. I reckon you've got the wicked stepmother syndrome. You've got her locked up indoors, skivvying for you. <laughs> well, just don't think of playing buttons and releasing her. Actually, I don't care how she goes on in the exams. What's so good is the way she's applied herself after what she's been through. She's done well, hasn't she? Mm. Yeah, I know, but... Who needs exams anyway? I mean, I didn't need any exams to get where I am, did I? Where are you, Martin? Now, just hold on a minute. I'll go and ask the policeman. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Right. Well, we haven't seen the great executive today, so things must be looking good. Otherwise, he'd have scuttled back for you to lick his wounds for him. You've got a cruel way of putting things, Rita. I think Derek's shown just as much character as Jenny, starting afresh after he lost his job. What's he starting the fresh out? I told you, haven't I? Merchandising. Yes, they're very amusing. <laughs> I find they're a very popular line, Mr. Gupta. I sell, well, my firm sells scores of them. I don't. Don't what? Sell scores of them. But you mean you've got some? Oh, yes. You see? And they don't sell? In one year, too. Very amusing, but not popular. Well, I'm sure you'll find this amusing. You see? Yes, that is amusing. <laughs> Very popular at parties. People fall about. I think they would do, yes. They're very reasonably priced, too? Yes. You'd like some? No, thank you. Oh, may I ask why, Mr. Gupta? Too big, Mr. Wilson. I've only a small shop. Ah, well, in that case... <laughs> or in this case. <laughs> Here we are, the very thing. <laughs> Takes up no room at all. Uh, one for the gentleman, this. You see? Now she's decent, now she's not. <laughs> oh, yes, this really is very popular. I call it my adult section. I call it pornography. <laughs> well, harmless fun, I think of it as. <laughs> I think of it as offensive. Oh. I didn't mean to offend you, Mr. Gupta. It offends me and it offends ladies. I ask you to take it away and leave me a shop, please. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. That's all right, Mr. Wilton. Go now, please. Right. Well, uh, thanks for your time, anyway. Goodbye, Mr. Wilton. Goodbye. Mr. Wilton. Yes? You have a nail through your head. It's the pleasant part of my job, going round the outlets, meeting the tenants. It's my hope it makes the brewery approachable. If any of the tenants have any problems or complaints, gives them a chance to air them. Coffee, anyone? Ah. <laughs> Tina, Tina uh, you, you, you've met Tina, haven't you? Yes, we've said hello. Uh, hello again. Hello. I'd like a coffee, thanks very much. Oh, yes, uh, usual for me, uh, Tina, two sugars. All right, coming up. Good lass. <laughs> Seems a bright girl. Oh, yes, a little treasure. Which you need, I'd imagine, when Mrs. Gilroy's not around? Exactly. She's not around today? Bet? No, 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 she's uh, away for a while. Oh, I see. 
But I run a very tight ship on my own, you know, Nigel. There's no cause for concern. I'm sure. <laughs> the secret of a good team, I always say, is no one is indispensable. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> Oh, sorry, love. I didn't know you had visitors. Yes, yes. What is it? What do you want? <laughs> well, there's a welcome. You think I called out from under something, wouldn't you? <laughs> now, I'm just going out for the tea things. Wondered whether you wanted something in particular. Uh, uh, well, you can see I'm in a meeting. Oh, right. Sorry. I hope you like kippers, that's all. <laughs> Sit down now. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that, Nigel. <laughs> Where does she fit in? Oh, she's a, a domestic, you know, housekeeping, that sort of thing. <laughs> While Mrs Gilroy's away. Exactly. Hey, yo! Welcome <laughs> to Ardo Paul. Yeah, well, I brought you these to cheer it up a bit, lovey. You're a love, Betty. Oh, are you? I just thought I'd pop round and have a look at you anyway. <laughs> Bruce. Yeah, lovely. Not exactly the Hilton, Betty, but it does. I tell you what, them stairs will get me. Uh, I'll put it with Everest just to get away from that little creep. It's the tonic just to be working away from him. Oh. Flying horse, how is it? Smashing. Is he? What with her that runs it? Smashing. That's a surprise. It's friendly, Betty, you know. The staff are welcoming. The boss is great, and the customers are quality, you know. Oh, well, I mean, that's good news, love. You believe me, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. Hello, Rita. Mavis. Ah, oh, <laughs> back from the fray. How did you get on? Oh, <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> Much merchandising done? Oh, so-so, Rita, so-so. Well, you can't expect to do it all in the first day, Derek. Exactly. But what I did do was mark out my territory, so to speak. And made contacts. You've hit the nail on the head. Contacts are the most important part of this job. Where are these contacts you're making, Derek? Oh, Rita, Derek's just back from a hard day. He doesn't want an inquisition. No, no, no. Rita's perfectly entitled to ask. Uh, I tell you what, I've just remembered I've left some papers in the car. Why don't you slip upstairs and put oh. the kettle on? Sure Rita won't mind. Oh, how can I object? Well, don't be long. I want to hear all about it. Right. I'm coming. Now, madam, can I interest you in some top-quality merchandise at ridiculous prices? Hey, Derek. And I was beginning to think you're in mucky videos. And I bet you sooner would be, wouldn't you? Well, it's not exactly buzzing, is it? Well, it does well during the day. It's nearly closing. Is that your partner over there? Yeah. How'd you get on with it? All right, I think. Your friends? Not friends, exactly. Well, don't be. Keep it strictly business. If you're in partnership, keep friendship out of it. Seriously. It's the dodgiest of all business arrangements, because sooner or later personalities creep into it, and you don't want friendship cluttering it up. OK? OK. I think she's got a beady eye on you. Christine? Who's that with Gail? Oh, I think it's Mr Baldwin who owns a factory. What factory? Baldwin's Curtains on Coronation Street. <coughs> Does he indeed? I promise you, Rita, this is a highly underrated market. I'll bet it is. Little things like this that bring in the children, who bring in the adults, who bring in the money. Uh, do you know how many millions the fancy goods industry turns over in a year? Are you saying I'm going to have shara loads of people come in here because they've heard I sell hopping frogs? Yes. You're off your trolley. And once the word gets around, they'll be coming in here for Christmas and birthday parties. Uh, Christmas stockings. You could fill a Christmas stocking from this case. Gifts for the grandchildren. Little presents for the kids down the road. Anytime you want a gift that doesn't cost much, oh, I think I'll pop into the cabin. They have such a good line in knickknacks and... Oh. The Derek, did you have to? I'm not ashamed of it, Mavis. No, you're not, are you? Oh, don't worry, Mavis. From the way you've been going on, I was beginning to imagine something much worse. May we, Amas? Have you heard out since the broody fella come? No one out. Strange, that, wasn't it? I mean, the way he walked in, sat down, looking round, as, as if we were looking for something. Or somebody. 
Then announces it's from the brewery. Strange. <laughs> Strange. 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 Strange how someone got down on his knees and licked his toe caps as soon as he walked in and all. Hey. You knew who he was. How would I know he were from the brewery? Tina, do you think I'm moving them kind of circles? You knew who he was, Jack. Could have knocked me down with a feather. It, yes, Dom. All right, come on then, girls. Right, Evan. Uh, I'll have a tonic water. Yes, it's a slim line. Come in on it, too. Uh, right, now listen, uh, tomorrow morning, yeah. uh, from half past eight till half past ten, can you do that? Yeah, I'll for just have to manage. Right, and then she can have an hour and a half rest, and I'll take her at dinner time for three quarters of an hour, right? I'm not taking her out in the afternoon, uh, a rest before the race, I reckon. Oh, as long as she doesn't stiffen up. Oh, conserve her energy, and don't go feeding her Ivy, she needs to be hungry for the hair. No, we're not on doggy talk again. <laughs> Enter. Why aren't you behind the bar? Oh, it's as dead as dust, boss. I, I, I was just wondering how things were like, you know. What things? Well, since the fellow from Brewery came, was it good news, bad news? What was it to you? I just wanted to know in case someone were up. I mean, I'm with you, boss, totally on your side. Well, if I wasn't worried before, I'm worried now. Hey, as bad as that, is it, eh? A routine visit, he said. First routine visit I've ever had, and it just happens after Bet's moved out. Ah, uh, he's been tipped off, hasn't he? We have an enemy within, Jack. Someone has grasped. No, who do a thing like that, boss? It's obvious, isn't it? Is it? There's only one person low, mean, and stupid enough for that. Jack, it's Bet, isn't it? Morning. Oh, Ivy, take a couple of these in for us, will you? Hey, I've not clocked on yet, you know. Me neither. That uh, daughter-in-law of yours taking the plunge, then, is she? What plunge? Putting money into that calf, the one she was asking my advice on. Was she? Hmm. And I hope you advised her to stop her tongue and devote herself to those children. Oh, Ivy, I've devoted my life into providing work so women don't have to stop at home. Uh, Mr. Bowen, I'm serious. Well, I'm not. All she wanted was financial advice. That's all I gave her. What she does with her family has got nothing to do with me. Her decision. Do you know, I don't think people around here got a very high opinion of me. Well, it's not surprising, really. I mean, I'm in a very false position, living under your roof. Yeah. Look, a woman has a reputation to think of, and her future. Mm. Now, if I were manageress or something, that would be different. You know, the more I think about it, the surer I am. About what? That Nigel Ridley came round here because he knew Bet had moved out. Do you know I think tipped him off? I have the faintest idea. She did. Bet. Trying to stir it, you see, hoping the brewery will decide I'm not capable of running this place on my own. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes, well, perhaps they think you need somebody to help you. Like somebody to take Bet's place. Aye. Well, I'm going to have a word with that lady. I mean, there's fighting and there's fighting dirty, and that's well below the belt, is that? It must have been her, don't you think? I don't know, Alec. And to be perfectly honest with you, I don't care. Eh? What's the matter? Look, you go and have a chat with Bet to get things settled. And perhaps then afterwards you'll have a minute or two to talk to me, all right? Mavis, mm? do you know how to about the Gazette starting a free sheet? What are they? I didn't know. Well, that makes three of us. Well, let's just hope it's an ugly rumour uh, then. Bye. Hey, you're not going without one of our little frogs, are you? Sorry? It's our latest line. Guaranteed to break the ice at any party. Oh, really, Reet? Ozone friendly, unleaded, special offer. Buy ten, you get one free. Come to think of it, buy one, you get ten free. Oh, you don't have to take any notice. No, 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 they're very nice, but um, I'll have to think about it. They might have all gone by dinner time. I'll risk it. <laughs> Bye. 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 You didn't have to take them from Derek, you know. You mean somebody else would have them? I just don't want you taking them out of pity. Well, it's off to the seaside, Southport today. Oh, very nice. Yes, I'm quite looking forward to it. I shall stroll along the prom with an independent air, with my suitcase full of merchandise. Well, I'm sure you'll do well at the seaside. I mean, people on holiday, they'll buy almost all sorts of things, won't they? Yes, they will. Hmm. <laughs> well. Bye. Yes, bye. Uh, bye, Derek. Will you, Rita, will you stop playing with those things? Uh, 
bet. Well, I've tried talking Ivy out of it. Oh, I told Audrey it was a waste of time and all. What can you do, eh? Dead determined to race it. Well, OK, let them go ahead and race it. Are you not going with them tonight, then? <laughs> no, once was enough for me. I reckon it's a lazy dog and that's all there is to it. You get lazy folk, you get lazy dogs. There's nothing you can do about it. Hey, last night, Ivy took it for a walk. She had to practically drag it. <laughs> you can't tell them, though, can you? Oh, no, oh, no. They think they're no better than us. Well, there you go. That's women for you. I do. Uh, you don't happen to know where Betty's, do you? Only I've just been up to the flat. Oh, is she not there? Well, no, she's not answering anyway. Oh, she'll be working. What work? Uh, well, I understand she's got a little job down at the uh, Flying Horse, a uh, barmaid or some such. That's shit now. I think so. And we think we've got problems, eh? No, I think he's very brave, really. Who is? Derek. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Well, I mean, he knows as well as we do. He, he must that the sort of stuff is selling now. Well, it's not exactly what you'd call classy. Well, I suppose somebody has to sell it. <laughs> exactly. But, I mean, he doesn't complain. He doesn't moan. He, he polishes his shoes and he brushes down his suit. He puts a smile on his face and he goes out full of hope and determination. Well, I think that's a kind of bravery, is that? Do you know, Mavis, I think you're right. Open the door, let's see the whites of their eyes and the colour of the money. Oh, so you're in charge today, are you? Well, I do seem to be senior member of staff present, yes. Jack, there's only two of us. Right, no sign of my nose, which I'm not altogether surprised about. I don't think his heart's in the place anymore. I don't think he's all that interested, you know. What? You think he'll be giving it up? Well, that's something I mean, right. He was better to run the place. I mean, we won't see him for days and nights on end when he were clubbing it, would we? Well, I don't think he'd fancy standing behind this bar for hours, would he? So what'll happen? So I reckon the brewery will try and find someone they can rely on to buy out the tenancy. Could be anybody then. Well, but... you for instance. Me? Aye. Well, I suppose there is a possibility. You know what? I think you'd be very good. Do you know you're right? I've been magic. And don't you worry, there'd always be a job for you. I'm not the kind of fellas I forget my mates just because I've gone up in the world. And your wife would be landlady, wouldn't she? Well, yeah. Working alongside you every day. No, she'd do mostly seller work. Don't you worry about her. We, we, we'd sort this bar out. Y yes, you're looking for somebody. Yes. She just couldn't help over here. Oh, yeah, well, we are open, do you know, so if you don't mind. Do you know, it's a very nice little pub, this. My father was a publican, yes, yeah, so I've always felt at home in pubs. Oh, did you? I know a lot about running them as well. Mm, in fact, I was talking to Alec about it all It's all very interesting, but we are open now. These punters are going to be pouring through them doors any yes, minute. Yes, all right, so. all right. I'll keep out of your way <laughs> for the time being. You know what she's after, don't you? This pub by the sounds of it? Vultures, some people. That sadly gone out of the door. She's looking to step into her shoes. A vulture. She'll call or what? Not entirely. No, I thought it might not be. I hear uh, Bet's working here. <laughs> well, she was. Was? Not any longer, I'm afraid. She not told you? No. No, we're, uh, we're not communicating very much these days. Separated, I believe. Yes. Can I get you a drink, Alec? On the house, of course. I'll have a small Irish. Did, uh, did she say why she was leaving? Not really, no. It was me that said why she was leaving. Which was basically that she seemed to have forgotten she wasn't a landlady any longer, but just an employee. Paid to do what she was told and keep her opinions to herself. You mean you sacked her? I'm afraid I did, yes. And quite frankly, Alec, you have my sympathy. I didn't have to put up with her for very long, so I can imagine some of what it must have been like for you. Can you? Of course, she was a single woman for a long time. I suppose she come to expect certain freedoms, had she? You know what you are, Marge? You're a nasty-minded, two-faced gossip. Hey! And I'm only grateful that Bet isn't working for you. 
There's the money for the drink. You can't talk to me like that. And don't you ever flatter yourself that you could possibly imagine what my marriage was like because it was... It was wonderful, if you must know. The most wonderful thing that's ever happened to me. Glad to see you. I've been rushed off my feet all day. Well, I told you I needed time to think things over. Oh, yes, of course you did. I, I mean, I wouldn't want to rush you into anything you weren't happy about. Oh, you won't manage that. <laughs> well, look, uh, shall we sit down? Uh, I'll get Christine to bring us a cup of tea. No, I'll get the teas. You sit down. All right, I will, before I collapse. Hi. Hiya. How are things? Oh, not so bad. We've not been that busy, actually. Mm, that's not what I've been hearing from Alma. Oh, keep your mouth shut, Christine. It's all right. I know what Alma's like. Might be coming back. Well, let's put it this way. First and foremost, I've got two young children to think about. Ooh, thank you. Well, I must say, you're looking well. Not like me. I look a sight. No, I know I do. I mean, what that chip fat has done for my complexion, I might just as well be healing cold. Anyway. Yes. Have you thought about me offer? Mm. And? Oh, come on, don't keep me in suspense. <laughs> I mean, I'd be biting my nails and they're that brittle. It's having them in and out of water all day. I am interested in coming back as some sort of partner. But not quite on the terms you had in mind. Can I talk to you now? Only I think we need to put some cards on the table. Oh, you do, do you? Look, Alec. I am in a very false position here. I mean, I came here because we're all friends and I wanted to help you out. What sort of conclusion do you think people are drawing me living here as a domestic? Yes, I can appreciate... And I'll tell you something else. That Jack Duckworth fancies himself as landlord here. He's got all his plans. He can't wait to get you out. Well, now, that doesn't surprise me in the slightest. Well, and you don't mind? You don't stuff a scheme in against you and you don't mind? He's like a lot of politicians, is Jack. He has no awareness of his own limitations. I could run this pub for you. Uh, yes. You and Jack. Oh, Jack would be the first person I get rid of. Well, you're obviously a sound judge of character. Look, I could be, well, manageress or whatever you want to call me. But I don't think things can carry on as they are, not for either of us. So I pay you £9,000 and I keep drawing the same weekly wage. But then at the end of each calendar month, we work out the profits and we divide them. 60% for you and 40 for me. Well, I was thinking more like 65-25. Uh, 60-40. All right, well, I'll tell you what, I'll meet you halfway. 33-67. 60-40. Oh, did I'm not right good at this no, sort of thing? neither am I. You, you sound as if you take the course in business studies. I mean, all cut and dried. Me, I just want what's fair. So do I. And what could be more fair than 60-40? All right, then. Well, I'm probably being a fool to myself, but if you won't budge, 60-40 it is. Right. It's a deal. Only if you promise to come in tomorrow. <laughs> I don't see why not. Mind you, I have to get cracking. I've got shopping and all sorts to do. Oh, well, maybe I'll be able to afford a bit of shopping and all now. Oh. Right. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Why, well, you are coming back. But I thought you said that I have two children to think about. Yes, I do, which is why I've got to carry on working so I can make sure their futures are secure. Gail, how do, how do you fancy a drink tonight, you know? Launch our new partnership on a gin and tonic. Yeah, OK. And you know, I've just thought where you got all those clever figures from it with that flash tycoon you in as consultant. Mike Baldwin. Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you invite him for a drink as well? I mean, you seem very... Uh, <laughs> personable. <laughs> there wouldn't be any ulterior motive in all this, would there, Alma? Well, I mean, you've got what you wanted. I mean, there must be something in the deal for me and all. Right. Well, I'll leave you to it. All right. Oh, hello. Hello, Mavis. Rita. How is Southport? Oh, quite nice. More like a day out rather than working. I am glad. And so am I. And now, now personal, but I'm off. Now, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bye, Bye. Rita. Bye. I must admit, I, I was a bit worried this morning with it being all new. Oh, Mavis. What? Oh, what's the matter? 
It has been more like a day out. I've hardly sold a thing. Oh, no. Well, they've all got their suppliers already, haven't they? They've already stocked up for the season, bought in bulk. I mean, let's face it, Mavis, what a load of old rubbish this is. But I, I thought you said they were market leaders. Well, they said they were market leaders. Leaders in rubbish, that's what they're leaders in. I mean, when you've demonstrated hopping frogs and chattering false teeth for the sixth, seventh, eighth time, you begin to wonder what life's all about. But you've sold some. Oh, some, yes. The odd plastic doggy poo. A few rubber fried eggs. Oh, yes, I've had my moments of triumph. Do you want to give it up? Well, that's what I thought, Mavis. I nearly threw the whole lot in the sea. And then I looked at the plastic spiders and cockroaches and frogs. And I thought of you, Mavis. And I thought, I'm not just doing this for me, am I? I'm doing it for you, for both of us. But if it's so heartbreaking... I'll get used to it. As long as I can come home every night and pour it all out to you. Of course you can. Then I'll get through, maybe. We'll get through. I'll shut the shop and we'll have some tea. But it's my presentation that's at fault. I need to rehearse it with somebody. You're not doing anything tonight, are you? So? I couldn't tell you, oh, you know a curly bean there. What? The chap came from... You know, it's state agents to value out. All right, what did, what did he say? Seventeen to eighteen thousand pounds, they said. Match, I don't think he knew what he was talking about, you know. I drew his attention to stone cladding. I said, that must have put a fuel bob on. <laughs> they said, no, actually, it's not a thousand quid off for that. <laughs> hi, Mike. Oh, hi. What are you having? Uh, no, I'm going to get them, and we'd like you to have one with us, wouldn't we, Alma? Yeah, Gail, tell me what an enormous help you've been with the cafe. So I just said what I thought, that's all. I'm, uh, I'm Alma Sedgwick, by the way. I don't think we've been introduced well, not properly. <laughs> Mike Borman, pleased to meet you. <laughs> Dina, yes? can I have a gin and tonic, a martini and whatever Mike's on? Okay. So, all signed and sealed, is it? Just about, yeah. Oh, look, there's a table there. Shall uh, Mike and I grab it and you can bring the drinks over? Yeah. Uh, 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 I just thought I can throw my drink to the log, is that, is it? No, no, but if you'd like to go the other side of the bar this way, thank you very much. I can always give you a hand later if you get busy. Won't be necessary. Tina, love, just serve yes, this lady, just will you? Yes, these, Jack. Um, She's looking to step into Bet's shoes, that one. I thought she were housekeeper. She is. She's seen the house now. She wants to keep it. Right, she can step up. Come on. Come on. Did you know she's put two pounds on since the last outing? Hey, any more and she'd be ruled out. Oh, why be? You've not been feeding her up. I have not, no. That she hasn't had a morsel that weren't set down on a diet sheet. Mm. Why she put weight on? There's got to be a reason. Let's have a look at her, shall we? Yes. Hello. Alf said you were looking for me. Yes, I, uh, I wanted a word. Very come in, then. What? I've been visited by the brewery. Not exactly armed with a search warrant, but distinctly curious about our circumstances. So? So, did you put them up to it? Me? I didn't. What should I want to play a trick like that for? Mind you, I don't expect you to believe me. You've never believed anything I've ever said, so why should you? Oh, all, all right. If, if you're saying it weren't you, then fair enough. My. We are in a funny mood. Believing something I've said. Blimey. <sighs> oh, for God's sake, sit down. Or as your solicitor warned you not to. I, uh, I paid a visit to the flying horse. Oh, you'll know all about the fiasco there, then. Yeah, I gather you and Marge didn't exactly hit it off. Well, that rat bag. She had me doing everything apart from cleaning the toilets. She loved every minute of it, having me under her thumb. Ex-landlady, fallen on hard times, great. 
I stuck it as long as I could, and then I told her a few warm truths. I wish I'd been there. Well, I think I gave quite a good account of myself. She tried the sympathetic approach with me, invited me to spill out my troubles. And did you? I said that... Well, much the same as you, by the sound of it. Told her she was a two-faced and nasty-minded gossip. Good for you, Gilroy. How's life at Tudor End at Street? Oh, hotbed of scheming and plotting, cliques forming, alliances being struck. Now it's changed, then. No. Well, some things have. Look, do you fancy a brew? Or have you got to get back? I dare say they won't miss me for another ten minutes. Yes, Don, lad. Two bites the best bits of Jack, please. You know, we ought to persuade the girls to take that dog racing more often. Well, it'd give them out that way, wouldn't it? Well, they could just win, you know. They could come back with a handful of fibres. Oh, come on, they will They'd be better off playing dog watch and entering Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. no. oh, I, uh, spoke to a reporter I know on the Gazette. I find yes, a bit and half of love. Okay. He doesn't know when, but he knows it's definite. And how will that affect you? Uh, <laughs> put me out of business. Well, that's what they'd like. Oh, My plan is to put them out of business. I uh, still you want some help? Yes, your kind offer has been noted. Yeah, well, it might not be a bad idea. No way. We're talking territory here, and this is ours. <laughs> well, I'd better be going. I told Paul and I won't be late. Oh, what a shame. Still, I mean, if you have to. Can I drop you somewhere? <laughs> oh, no, don't worry about me. I don't want to break up the party. You two carry on. <laughs> Bye, Gail. Bye. I thought my stomach was trying to tell me something. About time I found somewhere to eat. Do you know, I was just thinking the same thing. I got so carried away with our conversation. Well, why don't we find somewhere together? If you haven't got any other plans. No, I haven't got any plans at all. Mm -hmm. Hey, oh, there they are. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I think we found you in here. Oh, yeah. Don't come in to drown its sorrows, has it? Last again, as usual. No, she didn't race, if you must know. Didn't race? Well, that's one we didn't bank on, anyway. <laughs> mm. Jack, could we have two arms of lager and a bowl of water, please? You can, love. Tina, find someone with a bowl yeah, of water. Yeah, I'll find you some. Well, don't you want to know why she didn't race? Because she couldn't get to start in time. <laughs> uh, no, it was because she's uh, pregnant. pregnant. She's, she's not, is she? She is. Four weeks hey. gone. Another four or five weeks and we'll have some lovely little puppies. <laughs> so that's why she weren't very keen on running, mind you, who would be in that condition. They are the bit. Thanks, love. <laughs> there you are, darling. Oh, you drink on, that up, you drink it for more than one now. I didn't think I'd have allowed dogs. Uh, maybe Alec doesn't love what I do. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I mean, Alec, Alec who? Where is it? <laughs> mind you, this place is a palace compared to when I lived here before. I just had the one room then. Because Alf lived here. We used to meet each other in the bathroom doorway and be very polite. Uh, happy days, eh? They weren't bad, eh? Uh... You know, the flat I had down Midgley Street was a bit like this. I lived there for, what, oh, 12 years? I don't think I ever realised what a miserable hovel it was till the day I moved out. Alec. Like. Well. You must do whatever you want. Divorce me, or whatever. But there really was nothing between me and Paul Rigby. Cross me out and hope to die. Yeah. Yeah. You believe me? Ah, I, I suppose I do. More fool me, eh? <laughs> I don't think either of us have been right clever. I still love you, Bert. Oh, I've tried not to, but... Well, it's a bit like smoking. I seem to be addicted. Even though you know it's not good for you? Oh, I wouldn't say that. Look, do you fancy something to eat? I've got a couple of lamb chops in. Well, only if you're happy about me staying here. Hey, don't start asking me tricky questions. Just get your coat off and look as if you're stopping. But, why the hell have we done this, eh? Given each other such a hard time. Well, a life's great mystery, isn't it? The more you love somebody, the harder the time you seem to give them. I'll go and get them chops on.
I'm going to bring you this in bed, you know. Well, right, I'll save you a job. I've got out of the habit of being waited on, you see. You know, I woke up. I couldn't think where I were. Thought I must have been dreaming. Oh, I bet it were exactly the same dream I had. Oh, I bet. When I think how near we came. Don't sound like it still frightens me. I mean, that far. That far from throwing away everything. Everything. But we're not going to, are we? No, thank God. Oh? What? Alf. Opening up. If he were to find out that I've had a fella here overnight, carrying on just over where fresh food is being offered on sale to the public, it doesn't bear thinking about. <laughs> Even if you told him it were your husband? Well, he wouldn't believe that. Come on. Nobody's going to believe that. <laughs> What happens if Alec Gilroy answers? I'll put the phone down. Well, why can't you do that? Look, it might be that Megan. See? You know, the one who's supposed to be his housekeeper. Yeah. Well, she'd recognise my voice, whereas she won't yours. It's ringing. Hey, what are you doing? Shh, shh, just making a few discreet inquiries. Hello, Rover's return. Can I help you? Uh, hello. Um, could I speak to Alec Gilroy, please? Oh, um, I'm afraid he's not here at the moment. Can I take a message? She says he's not there. Ah. And she says, can she take a message? Ask her, does she know where he is? Um, could you tell me where he's likely to be? Um, no, I'm afraid I can't. Wh who's this speaking, please? She can't tell me, and she wants to know who it is. Who am I? Who am I? Look. Good lad. Magic curly. Yeah. Hey, who were they talking to? Megan of the Rovers. Oh, uh, what do you want to talk to her for? Well, I don't. But the point is, she is there on her own, Alec isn't. Oh. Which could be very good news for me and you, Vera. What do you mean? You think he might not be coming back anymore? Well, I don't know, but it's a sign, isn't it? Another sign that he might not be interested in. Uh, place. we've run out of cornflakes. Oh, we'll get some else, then. There's some stale bread you can toast. The captain has abandoned his ship. And you know what they do when that happens? Look for another captain. Hey, well, you want to get straight round at Rovers. There's still that Welsh woman, you know. Yeah, she could have ideas of her own, her, no. from what you were saying last night. No, no, don't worry, I can handle her. Tell you what, I might give the brewery a tinkle, though, you know. Keep them in the picture, let them know there is uh, somebody there that they can rely on, eh? Do you want me to have morning off and come round with you? No, 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 no. I'll give you a shout when they're altering the name over the door. John Harold Duckworth, licensed to sell. Beers and spirits. Stick with me, Vienna. We'll be in there yet. Look. I mean, we've had some meetings, but I think last night's must have set some sort of record for, well, for sheer childishness. All right. Well, we were trying to decide who's going to open the new abattoir. You know, really important stuff, oh, right? Yeah. So every name that was put forward, we've got shot down. You know, the sort of names you'd expect, like councillors and that. Then we started getting really silly. Somebody suggested Batman. <laughs> Somebody else, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Prince Charles. Oh, no, I'm sure he would have jumped at it. Oh, yeah, I'm sure he would. Only there were objections to him, weren't there, on account of he goes stag hunting or something. I'm not kidding, Ken. It was like a pantomime. Can you sign that, sir? Your wife's dead. Yeah, sure. It's a first farm trip. Uh, and no doubt you want some money. £3.50. Yeah, I thought as much. And I heard what you were saying, and I don't think that behaviour was childish. Because I think children would have more sense. You're right, they would. Right, well, come on, can we get the show on the road? Only I have a paper to get to the printer's Just by 11. Can we get some meat out to defrost? Okay. I saw that one gazette for our out. Ah, my rival. And what did you think? Yuck. You're not really saying that? No, and now my mates think the same. Oh, yuck? <laughs> Go right, ready. And are you going to tell Prince Charles how he was rejected by the Weatherfield Council? Oh, we heckers like. I'm not going to tell that man either. I don't suppose we could stay here all day. You'd quite like that, wouldn't you? Well, how it has its attractions, isn't it? <laughs> No. No, I want you home. That's where I want you now. Well, packing shouldn't take me long. Most of it's still in case. And it will. Pay it off to the end of the week. Yeah. You better nip down and tell him you're off then. Do you want me to? No. better get in touch with them solicitors. Stop them doing whatever it is they're doing. Otherwise we might finish up divorced after all. Alec, I do want to come back. Well, well, yes. But I've got to make one condition. Well? 
That Welsh snake charmer, or whatever she is, I want her out before I set foot back inside them doors. Yes, of course. Thank you. So you're not acting as housekeeper. You know? I'm not accusing you of out. It may be that she's as pure as the driven snow, and she likes now better to do than setting to with a duster. It's not the impression she gives. But then, maybe her appearance is against her. All I'm saying is, I won't be able to regard that place as my own home while she's still in it. Yeah. Yes, I can see that. I don't mind you to be fair to the woman. You ought to give her a bit of time to make her arrangements. As much time as you like. Uh, well, I thought for a minute... Only I won't walk down that street till she's gone. So we went to this little Italian place, uh, Zeffirelli's or Vermicelli's or whatever it was called, and Mike was absolutely charming, an absolute gentleman. Has he got a big car? Well, yes, but some things are more important than that, Christine. You'll find that out when you get a bit older. Anyway, we had a bottle of wine and we talked about one thing and another, and hey, he's divorced, did you know that? Yeah. So that was something we had in common. And when it got to the end, he insisted on paying. He wouldn't hear me contributing, not a penny piece. So it's got a big car and loads of money. Yes, but it was this company I enjoyed, Christine, and that would have been the same, even if we'd sharing a hamburger. Yes, Mr. Sugden. Well, I don't want to interrupt your conversation, but if one of you could find the time to serve me with a cup of tea and a toasted tea cake, I'd be very grateful. Christine will bring it over. Anyway, after he'd insisted on paying, I said I'd get the taxi, but... <clears throat> uh, was there was there something else, Mr. Sugden? Is it me, or have these prices gone down? They have, yes. Well, on behalf of my fellow pensioners, I'd like to say how much that'll be appreciated. Well, you've got Gail to thank for that, my new partner. Mm, well, if a win customer, I'll guarantee that. That's the idea. As long as there's no falling off in the quality or quantity. I mean, I've seen them tricks played before. Where are you going to sit then, Mr. Sugden? Over here, please. He'll be counting the currents in his tea cake. <laughs> anyway, listen, not only did he insist on pay, but he wouldn't hear of me taking a taxi, and he drove me back himself right to the door. Mm -hmm. And are you going to see him again? Well, we haven't actually discussed anything. Oh! But, uh, it's a small world and I'll probably bump into him. He, uh, he uses the rovers quite a lot, doesn't he? This phone is for domestic use only. When Mr Gilroy isn't here, I am responsible for it. Responsible for dusting it, darling, that's there all. There is a public phone in the bar. You're welcome to I use I am that. the boss in this pub. You are the boss and there's me thinking you're the salesman. Oh, like I thought you were the cleaner. Been trying bet frocks on, did any fit? You are not using that phone. Uh, all right. You watch me. I'm all just, well, I'm all... Alec, where have you been? Look, Megan. I've Look, I was telling to... him, you cannot use that phone. Phone, phone, did I say phone? Look, Megan. Could you just go through it because it's a bit important. All right, so. Everything all right, Jack? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll look, I, I would just um, I would, going to work I, behind the bar. I am. I am. I. But Alec, where have you been out like that all night? With Bet. Bet. Yes, we. We're getting back together again. Got to see if we can make a go of it. Oh, I am pleased. Oh, not half as pleased as I am, I can't tell you. It's as though... Well, anyway, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate the way you've helped me through through what's been a very difficult time for me. Yeah, what a friend's for. Exactly. But with, uh, with Beck coming back, well, I... I know you've got your career to think about and you must be itching to be on your way and I can understand that, of course. I see. And if any work comes along, naturally I'll be putting it your way, you'll be top of the she list. She wants me out, does she? What? Bet, she wants me out. Oh, I won't I've that served way. my purpose, so now out. Look, Megan... I'll tell you what I think. I think you've used me, Alec Gilroy. You enticed me here when you thought you'd lost your precious bet. And I think you're a fool having her back, but that's nothing to do with me, is it? She snaps her fingers and I have to be chucked out from the street. It's well, I'm not, not having like it. This. I won't be treated like that. Look, Megan. Don't you look, Megan, me. I've got my rights and I've got my feelings, right? I'm going to be cast aside just because she wants to come back here. And I... Oh, money. So you think money can make everything all right, do you? Well, I think some degree of financial compensation is in order. Oh, you do, do you? 
How much? I'm just going for a bit of a wander, she has going on. Oh, it still beats me why she had to lay out all that money just to get her old job back. She bought a share in the place, I told you. Yeah, I know. It just seems dark to me, that's all. So there's a lot of things that do. Why do you keep staring at? Hey, you see that taxi up there? Alex housekeeper's just got into it. Oh, must be some housekeeper if he's laying on taxes for her. No, she had her suitcases with her. Oh, well, that and she can't stick him out. The poor fella, they're running off in all directions. Ah, he's really going through it, isn't he? I mean, he does love Betty in his own fashion, you know. It's no pick. You know, seeing your see marriage photo, it's like he has. Oh, come on, they've only themselves to blame. I mean, we all have them mornings. We look across the breakfast table and we think, oh, my goodness, I tied myself to him. And the world is full of fellas that are better looking, better company, better, well, in all sorts of ways. And then you say, yes, I have. So I shall soldier on as best I can. And I'll see you later. Hi. Now, I am not one to take pleasure from the misfortune of others. No. But that Megan woman had it coming, you know. Putting on airs and graces, getting above herself. I could have told you that Alec wouldn't stand for it, and he didn't, did he? So what's going to happen now, Jack? Ah, good question there, Louis. You see, I haven't got your insight into these situations. No, no, no. Well, I would say that in a matter of hours, Alec will be informing the brewery that he wants out of this place. Do you think? Definitely. Stopped out all night, didn't he? Put the skids under the woman who had designs on running the place, so I can't see what else can happen. Hello, team. Alec told you, has he? Well, no, I uh, thought I'd let it come as a surprise. Told us what? I'm back. We're back. Back together. And we don't care who knows it. Oh, I'm really pleased for you. Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, oh, yes, and, and, and I'm pleased and all. Shall we go through? You know, I don't know why I bother. I don't know why I don't just chuck myself into flaming canal. Oh. She than this partner of yours, thanks, lovely. She's just doing a bit of shopping. Hour and a half ago. Yeah, well, she will have, won't she? Now she's got you where she wants she? I don't mind, ma'am. In fact, I'd almost rather she weren't here. It makes life a lot easier. Do you know, I'd give it a Ooh. month at the outside before there's ructions again. Huh? Don't mind if I join you, do you, Carla? Oh, help yourself, Mrs. Roberts. Thank you. What are you reading? Crime and Punishment, Dostoevsky. Just remind me, uh, what's that about? Well, it, it, it's about life in the slums in 19th century Moscow and the lengths which deprivation and poverty can drive a man. Right. How is life with Jack and Vera? You know, you've got to hope it works out for them. You can't want their marriage to fail just so you could have a chance of taking over this pub. No. Only an absolute nerd would do something like that. Yes, Mr. Sutton. I'll be better, please. Right. Hello, Percy, Oh. Hello. Hey, I shan't mind not working. If I can be in here with you at dinner time. I think you'll find that's just right. And I'll have a light tail, though. Okay. I do say you'd like your job back if you could get it. Oh, aye. It gets me out of the house. Oh, you know Mrs. Tilton's back there now? She's not, is she? I'm very much in charge by the look of things. I'd get, to, I'd get round there this minute if I were you. Oh, tar for telling me, Percy. But there's no rush. And I don't want to leave you without company. We could manage half an hour now if you're quick. Oh, what can she be talking about? Driving can. Take me out for a practice. Oh, come on, love. This is my dinner hour. I've had enough of motors. Not tonight, then. We'll set me out tonight. Yeah. Because I love it. I would have never believed it. I just love driving. It's brilliant. Yeah? Hey. Oh, Alan. Where? Who to, Vera? You're going to have to be more specific. You know what I mean? Alec and the brewery. Have you been on to him back and not turning up? No, because he has. He has actually turned up, as a matter of fact. So what do you want to lie to well, as he said, I don't know what his plans are. What's the matter with you? Just give us the proper tale, will the you? good news. The wonderful news, Vera, for them of us who believe in marriage, is that Ben and Alec have got back together again. Do you mean they're not getting divorced? No, they're not, no. Do you mean they'll still be coming yes, back? Yes, they are, yes. Well, they're rotten. So, so timing. let us be happy for them, shall we? At least while we're in public. All right. You didn't, uh, didn't get in the bar at dinner time, then? No. No, I was going to, but uh, I just can't face it, not just yet. You don't... Uh, you don't regret coming back, do you? No. Well, let me put it another way. I mean, you're not... 
was coming back for my sake. No. No. It's where I want to be. Good. I think what I can't get used to is the way we're both being polite to each other. Well, that's inevitable, I suppose. Look, would it help if we went away on holiday somewhere for a couple of weeks? Say no if you'd rather not, I, I wouldn't mind. I just wondered, you know. Like where? Oh, anywhere, abroad, anywhere. Just grab a package, the sooner the better. Uh, it'd be lovely. You mean like a sort of delayed honeymoon? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Right. I'll nip down to that travel agent right now. Throw all this stuff back in your suitcase and we'll be out of here before you could say Dormelinus. <laughs> Alec, can we afford it, love? Afford it? Of course we can. We can afford out. What's, what's more important than this, eh? You are my husband, aren't you? Well, I'm hoping so, yeah. Mind you, I've no doubt I'll prove to be regretting this once I get out there and they start ripping us off left, right and centre. Viva España. Makes me ill just to think about it. Still, I've said I'll go and go we will. Only if you're sure you're going to be thoroughly miserable. I am, I am. Great. I'll be back behind that bar tonight, no, Missy? Only if you're sure you're happy about it. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, where's the management? If you mean, Mum, she's just gone round to the shop. What do you think about that, then? Weatherfield Council snubs Prince Charles. Hey, that's what Mum was telling us about <laughs> yes. this morning. It was a far better story than the one I had, so quick as a flash, in it went. Hello. Hi. Hi. Look what Dad's put in his paper. What's that? It's a story you told us. Best front page we've had in months. Oh, I see. It's about the royals people read it, or so I'm told. Oh, hey, but Ken. What? Well, you can make it sound as if it was a serious debate. I said it was only a joke. I didn't quote you. Your name isn't mentioned. Oh, well, that'll fool everybody, won't it? I think it's ace. <laughs> you are. Voice of the people. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll just say one thing, can I? Yeah, sure. Well, it might have been nice if you'd warned me. I mean, I thought I was talking to my husband this morning, not giving a flipping press release. Yeah, well, OK. I mean, ideally I would have, but I didn't think of it till I dropped you off, and then I had to rush around the clap and getting a front page out. Forgive me. Just this once. <laughs> Gazette's free sheet. Want to know what their lead story is? Go on. Traders condemn new parking restrictions. Wow. Yeah, exciting, eh? And they don't even say it's because Prince Charles might want to park outside the market. <laughs> no, I don't have my journalistic flair. And... What's more important, they don't have a wife in the heart of the council to feed them all the juicy tidbits. So, what's the homework tonight then? Sorry. Hello, Christine Law. Oh, yeah. I I'm oh. sorry, but uh, we are closed, actually. A good job I'm not hungry then, isn't it? Oh, Gayla, didn't you? Oh, you've just missed us. She went about five minutes ago. Oh, I'd have been earlier on. I had an appointment at Crocodile. She'll be in tomorrow. Oh, good love. Uh, can I help you, Mrs. Pierce? Not really. I'm looking for Gail. Well, uh, if you're under the misconception that there's still a job here for you, I'm sorry, but we are fully staffed. So you said. And I don't think Gail will be saying any different if that's what you're hoping. So there's uh, there's no use you bothering her. Well, I'm a bother, am I? Oh, well, I guess I'm aware then. So I Christine look. And you can take that look away, Christine Carter. I am not the Wicked Queen. I'm just somebody trying to make a modest profit. And I'll be very surprised if Gail isn't trying to do the same thing. It's a legal profession, I blame. You know, I mean, everybody knows how to drag the feet. You try buying and selling flaming houses these days, it takes forever. Yeah, well, we're not selling it, are we? No cost to now. I am not just talking about houses, Vera. Of course, yeah, well. What were you just saying just then? I am Hurry talking up. about why Bet and Alec didn't get a divorce. They went to see their solicitors weeks ago, didn't they? Now, if these two fellas had pulled their finger out, it would have all gone through, signed and sealed, wouldn't well, it? Well, you know what I think? What? I think it should be me that's getting the divorce. Eh? The number of times you've led me up the garden path, promising me this, promising me that. No ever happening. Well, Curly heard you, didn't you, Curly? You're around the twist, you. You know that. Yes, well, you're all talk, you, and you never achieve aught. Yeah, this, Curly. 
Yes, oh. well, you can talk as much as you like, because I'm not listening anymore. You know, you know, everything that goes wrong is my fault. You do understand that, don't you? I mean, a drop of rain when the washing's out, potted meat's gone off, the fall in the valley with a pound, all down to me! All I'm saying is you shouldn't have built my up. Don't go building mine up, neither. How do you mean? Talking about flaming divorce when I know you don't beat it. Oh, do I not? Well, I might just shock you one of these Shock? Days. Shock! I get a shock every morning when I look at the pillow and see your face. You know what I say? Why? Do you want to know why oh, I bye, say? Oh, why, why? Yeah. Pity. Pity? Yes. Pity. Because I know if I walked out that door, you wouldn't get anybody within a million miles. I bet you're wondering why I put up with this, aren't you, Kelly? Eh? What kind of saint is that man, eh? Well, you didn't hit anybody. Come on, Carol, the natural. Uh, Teeny, you should see my three-point hey, turns. That's note. I can do five and six-point turns. <laughs> Usual. Uh, yes, that's, please. That's uh, 126. Yeah, I'm having right? an I mean, a piece of cake. I don't know why everybody makes out there, are oh, Well, they are when you're facing downwards. It's when you're facing upwards. <laughs> She in here tonight. Well, I don't know. All she said to me was she didn't need the flat anymore because she was going back to Valley. That makes some of her solicitors advised her. Oh, I don't think so. No, she looked very, you know, happy. Oh, oh. Ah. You look wonderful. Thank you. I thought about slipping out of the side door, but... Hey, hey, you better not after that holiday I've just got a book. I see you got some new stuff then, Alex. <laughs> yes. Nobody else would have me. Well, it's good to see you back here, love, anyway. Here, here. Right. Yes, ladies. And before you ask, yes, it is me. You know what I'm like? I couldn't stop away. Well, I'm very glad to hear it. So am I. Thank you. You better tell me what you want. He might sack me again if he thinks I'm just chatting. <laughs> Half a lager and a sweet sherry, please. Right, I'll see if I can remember where everything is. <laughs> oh, uh, I know a lot of Paul thinks it's clever, but I'm not one of them. What's that, Mr. Sullivan? This modern trade here of criticizing the monarchy, which I see you and your fellow councillors decide to join in. Well, it's not as bad as it looks. Look, have you ever thought where we'd be without them, eh? Because I have. Revolution, civil war, that's where we'd be. There's no excuse for this sort of thing, you know. No. I'll tell you this, if Prince Charles ever does visit Weatherfield, I, for one, will be proud to welcome him. Yes. What was all that about? Oh, it's just something that Ken picked up on that I said as a joke and he's blown it up out of all proportion. 125, Deirdre. Thank you, love. This doesn't sound like Ken. Oh, this is Ken, the born-again tabloid journalist. Oh, perhaps he misunderstood what you said. Yeah, and perhaps I'm going to have to be a lot more careful in future, just what I do say. Thank you. So, how does it feel? I like come in home. Oh, 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 well, <laughs> no chance. Oh. Right, I've, I've packed my safari jacket and my son hat. All I need is the calamine and I'm all set. What are you doing? Nothing, love. You're not proposing to take all of these, are you? We don't want to be involved in excess baggage at the airport. Oh, don't fret, love. None of these are going with us. What? None of them? There's not a top here. I'd be seen dead in. Let alone supping a jug of sangria under a thatched umbrella. Oh, no, come on, take the spotty one, eh? Because this was the one you were wearing in Torremolinas the time I came over and brought you back. Alec, love, two years for a top, it's an eternity. I'll have to pop out and buy some more. Aye? You don't want folk thinking your wife's old-fashioned, do you? This holiday's costing an arm and a leg as it is, without all the extras. Besides, I mean, it's hot out there, you won't need much. No, you're right. Yeah, right. I should be more forward-looking, yeah. Chuck them all. I'll go topless. You won't. No, you're right. Folk don't make anything out of it these days. Matt, you're not serious. Don't you like me topless? Well, you know I don't like you flaunting yourself. Yeah, yeah. Go on. Go out and buy yourself a little bit of something. Best if I take a bit of plastic just to be on the safe side. Oh, and Alec. I can go topless sometimes, can't I? Just as long as it's not outside. Don't go on, Vera. Look, I can't help it, Jack, when I'm in pain. It's just not in my nature. I know. I 
I slept a wink last night with disappointment. Do you know, I could just see it now, my name above the rover's door. Licensing perseverance. Every time I turn the pillar, it was there laughing at me. But Curly knows. Curly understands. What? Do you know you can't trust anybody, can you, Curly? Eh? I mean, take that, Alec, eh? Sly, selfish, with no thoughts of anybody else. Do you know him and Beck getting back together like that? Well, it's callous. I'll get your own breakfast, love. I'm too cooked to think. Can't stop you talking. Send it notice of him. He's just as cut up and all. Oh, we needed what a chance to prove to Brewery that we could run a pub. And now them two there spooning. Well, we've missed it. We've missed the boat. I'll never get to stand behind a bar. Well, who's going to be running it while they're on holiday? What holiday? Well, Bet said she was going to Spain. Which means you'll be running it, won't you? So all you've got to do is get the brewery down to see you at work. No, Alec will bring somebody in, won't he? It's a bit short notice, isn't it? Why, when are they off? Today, I think. Well, that's a bit sharpish. I mean, he couldn't have brought somebody in and shown them how to run the place. Otherwise, I'd have seen them, wouldn't I? Yeah, but can you run it? Yes, not, kiddo. I could run that place with both hands tied behind me back, swinging from the ceiling with a paper bag on my head. Well, that'd bring in some extra trade. Get the black suit out, Vera, love. We're in business. And you ask me, can I Jack run a pub? <laughs> <laughs> Just ask your teacher what your next term dates are. Oh, the last no, you lost the sheet they gave you. Just you find out what they are. All right. See ya. Ta-da, love. Uh, bye, love. <sighs> oh, is that a sigh for your lost love? No. I don't know that it's that much easier for kids nowadays, even though folks have cars and videos and a deep freeze. Well, some folk can it roll don't have counsel of Barlow to look after. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a lot of use. Well, I've got to quote you on that. Who's asking? Only me, dear. Yeah, but which one? Jekyll, the loving husband, or I, the investigative journalist? I'm going to have to get you a proper hat to tell you apart. Yeah, well, make it a nice trilby. Like Spencer Tracy wore in Adam and Eve. <laughs> you go back a bit, don't you? All right, I'll drop it in. Sarah, what's your committee today? The Prince Charles Appreciation Society. Come on, love. It was you who said that some of the councillors take themselves too seriously. Yeah, but I have to work with them. <laughs> there you are. What? And the very art for you. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now, not so much as it's dashing about in the streets. You know, this is not a playground. It was when I was a lad. But it isn't anymore. You've got a nice playground where you can dash around and do whatever you like in safety. All right. Okay. Good lad, off you go. Hey, Percy, I need you. On duty, excuse me. Here, listen, you have to help me. There's the old complex web of welfare state out there waiting to assist the likes of you, Mrs. Pierce. Yeah, but they can't do for me like you can. Well, at least give them a chance. Yeah, but they haven't got your experience. What experience? Upper management. Oh, well, that's undeniably true, yes, but... Uh, Hey, she sacked me, Percy. You saw her, you were there. And it wasn't right. You know I'm not very good with birds, so that's why I came to you, so you could talk to her. <sighs> with your case and experience. Look, uh, but mine was in a much bigger way in the army. I know, love, but you wouldn't have spoken to one of your privates like that, would you, Percy? I always treated my lads with consideration. Man, you could be firm as well. That's what I mean, Percy. Come and talk to her. I want you to come look, and see. Look, I've got my duties to perform me and I've got responsibilities. I've oh. got to tend for the future. Oh, I know, yeah, Percy. Just look at that camera there, look. And listen, I'll see you at lunch time. I'll come back for you. Come on, you silly old Honest, Alma was so rude to her. He had to bite my lip. I know Phyllis can get on your nerves a bit, but she's all right. She didn't need being served like that. No. Besides, jobs aren't easy to come by around here. I know how she felt. Yeah. Still, now you're back here. Soon get everything sorted. Uh, Christine, love, are you trying to build the Leaning Tower of Pisa out of dirty plates? Oh, just over there, sir. No, come at No ifs and buts, Christine. Come on. Uh, listen, I'm just I'm just popping out. I, uh, I need a manicure. I've, uh, I've got a special day tonight. Audrey, take you the dog for a walk. Well, if I have, I've lost it. <laughs> no, to tell you the truth, Alma, Harry's love won't be doing much walking for oh, a bit. What, broke his leg? Got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Well, I mean, I don't profess to know much about dogs, but isn't that an old condition for one called Harry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
course it is the bit, yeah. Well, didn't, didn't any of you notice? <laughs> well, with a greyhound, it's the nose you're looking at, isn't it? I mean, that's the bit you want sticking out in front. <laughs> Gail, excuse me, I want to... No, it's all right, I'm going. Yeah, what about these Gilmore's then? You know, love, we straight women have got it dead wrong. You want a wonderful holiday in the sun, give your old man the run around. There is no market price on us honest women, not anymore. No time for gossip, ma'am. No, no, I mean, who has? I do it all in the head, you know. Do you really? Oh, yeah. I mean, I never write sandwich lists down. We can lose a scrap of paper, can't you? But you never lose your head, can you? <laughs> Some do. Uh, oh, are you? Somebody must have been splashing out a bit. That's exactly what I intend to do, Vera. Splash around on a golden beach. Very nice. How long are you going for then? Oh, just a couple of weeks. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Just a couple of weeks. Oh, don't be grudge woman a bit of fun. I mean, she's been through Ellen I walking. She has. She deserves a lie on the beach. I'd be happy to see her go for a couple of months. I'd happily swill out the rovers, me, if I thought it was going to make them too happy again. Thanks, Jack. Hey, a uh, couple of hours, you'll have waiters running all over you. You're not as useful as me, though. Well, if I'd more time, Jack, I'd like to debate that. But, uh... but just, just a second, Ed, if, if you don't plan on helping us this side. I mean, not that we can't manage on our own, I was just wondering. Hey, don't ask me. That sounds my lord and master. Well, perhaps our Vera could give us a bit of hand, pull a couple, if we get a bit busy, you know. It's taking his time to tell you, isn't it? Tell me what? It's self-evident, isn't it? Naturally, the man expects me to run the shop for him. He's not to say, really, is he? Not one of those understanding. Man of action. Come on, chap lad. Oh, as soon as I saw these, I thought of you instantly. God knows why. Oh, come on, Alec. They cost a day's wage. You smile and enjoy them. Look, Pet, I don't think... Are you all right, really, Wicked? Yes. Of course I'm all right. Don't I look all right? Yeah, oh yeah, very, 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 yeah, yeah, that would suit you. I mean, I wouldn't have seen you immediately in them, but now I have the, the, uh, yeah. Just get on with it, Jack. Well, I, I, I was just wondering if you were all right, you know, got everything sorted, feel secure, like, you know. Well, we've got our tickets and our passports. We're going to tie little labels on each other. I think we'll manage. All you need is a plane, eh? <laughs> exactly. What is it, Jack? Do you want to come with us? No, no, no. I'll go no, and put the no. kettle on, Alec. No, no, I, I'm, I'm happy here, knowing that me being here is, is helping you be, be over there. Like, I, I was just wondering what you wanted me to do while you're away, like. Oh, know? yes, I've been meaning to have a word with you about that, but I've been that busy. Yes, I, I, I do understand, Alec. You've got to get the shorts right, otherwise, on the beach, it's murder if they get wet. Look, Jack, what I would like you to do is not set fire to the pub and keep these on every time you operate that till. Otherwise, carry on as your normal, inefficient self. You can trust me there, Alec. Yeah, only we've got a taxi coming early evening and we've God knows what to do. So, can I rely on you, Jack, to lock up and then open up again later? What are these hands for, Alec? <laughs> 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 Come this evening, you're going to be working under me, so just watch yourself. Oh, I might be working for you, Jack, but I won't be working under you. Hey, 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 don't be cheeky now. Yes, boss. No, boss. Boss. Landlord. <laughs> Charles would have come then. <laughs> to open an abattoir? I doubt it. Oh, I don't know. He gets up to some funny things. I mean, every time you open a newspaper, there's always a picture of him playing with penguins or with crash helmets on somewhere or other. I reckon they should have asked him. Yeah, well, I'm surprised you didn't read the recorder. Wait, it's free, innit? Phyllis! I'm not on my own. Go on, tell them, Percy. I'm here to mediate, Mrs. Pierce, not to be confrontational. Oh, get on with that. Uh, would it be possible, young lady, to have a word with the proprietor of this establishment? Oh, and take around Gail's back again. You don't know the half of it. Gail's an equal partner now. Oh, is she now? Well, that seems to set things to rise. 
So I can leave you lazy to sort yourselves out then. No need for us men getting in the way with too much logical thought. Oh, right? Oh, Come on then, Phyllis, get your sleeves rolled off. Those soap suds have been ruining my hands. Well, I suppose I could start straight away. No. Oh, I understand. You'll have to see your partner and make arrangements. Tell you what, love, see you to bother. Phyllis. No. How do you mean, no? I'm sorry, love. I hear Alma was very rude in the way she dismissed you. I don't approve of that. You've worked hard here. But... But what, love? I'm afraid it amounts to the same thing. I've made plans for this place. I don't intend it should just potter along the way it has been doing. I put money in here. I've made my plans. And I'm not part of them. No. You've even got plans for a washer up. Yes, I have. Phyllis, look, please, let me explain to you. I'll sit down and have a cup of tea, some lunch. No, thank you. I've got something to warm up at home. Yes, I'm in about a year late myself. That all went quite well, didn't it? Well, we got what we wanted. You can't ask for more than that. Makes a welcome change. Nice atmosphere as well. You make it sound as though we've always got the knives out for each other. You know that's only in months with an R in them. What I meant was, I thought folk might be a bit touchy about the headline in the recorder. I mean, they're not daft, are they? Not all of them. Yeah, I guess they think they all figured out where Mr. Barlow, the editor, got his story from. Actually, I thought it was rather useful. I'm not suggesting these leaks are good for the council. No, I'm not. Once may be considered an accident. The twice might look like intention. If I remember my Oscar Wilde from school, that's a bit of a misquote. Well, Deirdre, that is one of the problems with quotes. Point taken. Is he here? All set, Tiger? Well, I am. I don't know if the Sherpas have packed up yet. Right, come on, boss. Let's be having you on the road, eh? Oh. Do you know, I have a very nasty feeling, Jack, that you are trying to get rid of me. But, well, I am. I am, boss. I mean, because I know what you've been through. I mean, I know how much you need a real rest. Do you know if it hadn't worked out between you and Bet? I was going to have a whip round and send you somewhere to recuperate. Anywhere particularly you had in mind? Well, you can bet, and it wasn't our fault there. Where's that, Jacko? Uh, I was just saying it's going to be hot where you're going, innit? If it's not now, it will be when we get there. Silver off, then? No, I think they're going for a drive round the block. Look, are you open or should we go and help ourselves? Right, in you go, Tina, look. Hey, I wish I'd have brought some confetti. We're not getting wet, Vera. Oh, I don't know that, but you know, it's got that kind of thing. <laughs> Come on, otherwise we're not going to get anywhere. <laughs> Jack off. All right. Have a nice time. Ta -da. Yeah. Thank you, son. Don't worry Look about the place. Down. Don't worry. <laughs> Hey, you wouldn't credit it, would you, love? It makes a man's brain go soggy like last uh, week's cornflakes. I know. You never had a thought about who was going to open this place, you know? No. What happens if I weren't here? I don't know. It'd have been a right state, wouldn't it? Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, I know where all the boots are. Don't have Otherwise, I'd have to ring the brewery and tell them what kind of mess he's left us in. Now, that would do no favours for Alec, not with the big boys. Yeah. Hey, well, that might be a good idea. You know, to have a chat with them, so keep them up to date, like. Good idea. Right, we're open. I told you so, didn't I? You did, so I. Huh? Yeah, well, get a lot of drink then. Aye, you deserve one. I'll just have half, thanks. Uh, 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 Tina, yeah. will you just pull uh, Mr. Watts and his friend a couple of pints uh, to celebrate? I'm not a stingy landlord. On the house! Oh, very, very <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you put the money in the till. What are you doing here, Betty? I'm here to run this pub. Don't be daft. I'm not being daft. I'm in charge of you to prove it. I've got the keys. Where did you get them from? Alec, earlier on. So come up, no more free drinks. Are you going to send them all bankrupt? A little. Yeah, while you're still speechless, just get the money in the till while I go and take my coat off. Didn't get to be under you for very long, did I? I know, we're right looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, Jack. <laughs> Penny for your thoughts. I thought you'd gone. Well, I have, really. I've, uh... 
I've got this bit of a date. <laughs> well, I'm away. I don't want to keep him waiting. Well, not too long. Lollipop. Because it's not for you, that's why. That's not an answer. <laughs> no, well, you're right. You haven't got one because they rot your teeth, give you spots and ruin your appetite. There you are, how's that? Is that what you want to happen to Dad? <sighs> Maybe, you never know. Is it because of what he did, writing that stuff about the prince? Yeah, well, it's connected. When anybody asks you something, you should just say no comment. Where did you learn that? Well, that's what they always say on the news. Well, I'll have to give it a try then. Now, do you think you could manage to lay the table for me? Go and get the knives and forks. Now, where's Rupert Murdoch got to? I'm surprised to see you back on here again, Santa. I bet you're not so surprised as some folk. You mean me? I am. Well, I credited you with a bit more pride than to come crawling back here after what he did to you. I think you've got the wrong person that did the crawling. He begged me. He said his marriage depended on it. I mean, I wouldn't do it for him. But, I mean, this bet. Yeah, well, it's very nice to see you back, anyway. Ah. Isn't it? Terrific, yeah. Thank you. You looking for someone, Lord? Oh, uh, no, no, not really. Uh, I, I just had a message for Mike, uh, uh, Mr. Baldwin. Did you bring your own pigeon? Why is it? Is he not here? <laughs> oh, he's gallivanting in London, love, painting the town red. Take the notice of her. Uh, he's, he's gone on business. He's a very sound businessman, is Mike. Oh, he's uh, he's a friend of yours, is he? Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, he stood for me when I married Audrey. Oh, very close. Look, can I buy you and Audrey a, a drink? Oh, no, no, couldn't. I mean... Well, look, no, look, it had it saved me the embarrassment of being a single woman on my own, standing at the bar. So, right, what is it? Oh, mine's again. a vodka and tonic. Oh, well, That's look, very yeah. nice of you. She set a cap at Baldwin. Don't talk so dark. Not my word. You all right, Cap? Come on, yeah, Kill, it's right. your show. Is this dead? I don't know about the glass, but he is. What's <laughs> up? Do you not want another? You've been nesting that for hours. Yes, of course I do, but I can't be bothered with Jack when he's got a temper on him. Take no notice. Losers always go bananas. And not all losers are like him, you know. Losers are very sympathetic, compassionate, because they've got personal empathy with people's pain. Well, I can appreciate that. Listen, don't you worry. I'll fetch you a drink. Ooh, wait for service, eh? And the Rovers. Get in there, kid. <laughs> Shut up, Ken. I hate it when you talk like that. It's sexy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ken, where have you been? Your dinner's kept, but I'm afraid Tracy's had your pudding. Ken, is that you? Do I look like Spencer Tracy? Do I look like Catherine Hepburn? Well, you might, yeah. You like it? Oh, I'm sure it's very dapper for work, but I was brought up that a man shouldn't wear his hat in the house. It's bad luck. So, how was your day? Well, a bit tricky to start with, thanks to you and Prince Charles, but that passed. Do you know what? I think they are finally beginning to accept me, take me seriously. Yeah, how are things with the plans to play today, nursery? Well, that was top of the list when we got to it. What are you playing at? Well, that was a uh, professional question. That's not funny, Ken. Now, come on, take it off. Well, I really would like an answer to my question. How did you know about the closure, the possible closure? I mean, I couldn't have mentioned it. I only heard about it myself today. Who have you been talking to? A good journalist never reveals his sources. Come on, Ken, take the hat off. But I would like an answer. <sighs> Look, the nursery is falling down. Closure might be the best thing. Yeah, but <laughs> don't you feel it should be a matter of public debate? Not yet. Look, Ken, you can't publish anything about this. One word in that paper and all the trust I've built up with me colleagues flies out the window. So, what are you saying? Tell you what I'm saying. No comment. That's all. Just no comment. Morning, Mrs. Webster. Hey, Mark, how are you working today or what? Of course I'm working. What else would I bought for? No, I knew Kev was on foot, so I thought, well, I don't need him being knackered, you know. You <laughs> cheeky beggar. I've heard you're the skyver. Hey, Mark, I like the jalopy. Yeah, my dad's off in a business, do. My girlfriend Jean runs a showroom, so she said I can have card on loan. Your girlfriend? Why don't you go to the showroom? Which one's this? The only one I like can have is mother. 
Uh, Morning, sir. If sir's ready. Tell me what next? Who's kicked you out your bed? It's an old change we got. Can't wait to get on that sump. Yeah, what you mean is your dad's away, you got up first and pinched mummy's motor. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. Well, you ready or what? Oh, you know, she didn't cut that row out. It's not Disney round here, this is a respectable area. Come down at lunchtime, love. You might get a driving lesson in. Hey, what, in this car? Yeah, if you like. Okay, see you later then. Hang on to your dentures. Bye, love. See ya. Woohoo, cool. It's this council source you keep quoting. I mean, it's obvious what folks will think. I feel like a marked woman down at that town hall. Well, the public has a right to know. Yeah, and I have a right to know how you found out. But there was all this business about Prince Charles. I mean, that was really pathetic. As if we seriously expected him to come all the way down here just to open a, a flipping abattoir, of all things. Well, we got a tremendous reaction. Quite a postbag, in fact. Yeah, tremendous means two letters. Overwhelming means six. Have I got my sums right? Well, let me put it this way. Our current issue is four pages thicker than the Gazette. This keeps up, and their free sheet will die the day. Yeah, I bumped into a chap from the Gazette yesterday. He was muttering something about ethics. Well, he would, wouldn't he? Well, am I giving you a lift, love? Or are you another who don't be seen with the press? Oh, Dad, you're not still laughing on, are you? I mean, it's daft, isn't it? All this tripe about which hat you're wearing. It's all right for a bit, but it gets really boring when you're both keep <laughs> thank you very much. Talk about rearing vipers. There are vital issues of press freedom at stake here, young lady. Anyway, it's your dad who keeps doing the daft headlines and the trick questions. He'll have my name mud when it's not Edwina. See, you're off again. It's mine bending his there. <sighs> Bye. Blimey, you're keen on today, aren't you? What's got you going at last? Duke of Edinburgh had a word, has he? I'm working to plan, aren't I? You know what? I've got a plan, an idea. I've got a dream. Yeah? Well, come and get your brew first. But once you've earned it. You have any dreams, you Kev? Hey, I'm a married man, me. Not allowed dreams. Sex, you filly. Excitement, adventure, achievements. Yeah. I wanted to own this place, didn't I? But your dad stepped in, didn't he? Well, you're in charge. He's in Scotland. I'm not with you. I'll say we finish this work a bit earlier. You'd lock up you and go on, wouldn't you? I might. Now me, if I had a shout, I'd use the gear here to do my own thing. Like what? Converting a motor. Hey? Getting a banger geared up for racing. My dream you see is to race. I want to win world championships. <laughs> no banger racing could be a start. So you fixed. <laughs> me? Well, I need your permission to wheel a banger in here, don't I? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you better see your dad. Oh, your mum if he's not around. Look, I've seen her. She said I've got to ask you. No, I don't know about that. Sounds a bit dodgy to me. piece of cake, Kev. Okay, I'll have a word with you, ma'am. Till then, I'm saying no. There's no need, I've seen her. She said we can crack it off. We? Oui. I thought you'd be thrilled, not putting the mockers on it. Listen, Crate Egg, I was conversing bangers while you were still in your pram. Oh, yeah? Did you win out? Well, no. Sort of died to death, you know, courting, getting married. But I will ask your mum, okay? Okay, we'll be positive, like. Tell them pulling me weight here, what a good team we are. Now, banger racing could be the making of me. <laughs> As a note. Uh, well, I've got a lunch date, so it'll be about uh, three -ish. Oh, and there's a machine broke down. Well, we've got a maintenance contract, haven't we? So phone them. And there's been mutterings about the piecework rate. All right, I'll make it the Rovers. I mean, who cares about orders when piecework comes first? Mike! Hey, Mike! Oh, -ho. he loves making fool out of folks, does our Michael? Oh, I, uh, I don't think he heard me. <laughs> well, I know he's got his faults, but I don't think he's deaf. Anyway, I wouldn't worry, love, with our Gail doing your donkey work at the cafe. You'll have all day to chase him, won't you? Well, really? Prunes, two tins of prunes, large. Are those mine? Yes. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Pardon me, Mrs. Brennan, but I'm not sure I like your tone just now. Oh, hey. You could suit I, yourself. I can't see how I handle things in my cafe as any business of yours. Really? When it concerns the mother of my grandchildren? And as for that crack about chasing men, well, words fail really? me. Really? Well, I can't say I've noticed. Ladies, just remember you're in a shop, not a boxing match. And I should have thought you'd have been grateful for me giving Gail such a good opportunity, never mind making sarcastic Gail remarks. Gail has got enough on her own mothering those children. The last place she needs to be is cavorting in some cafe. Being your partner in crime. Hey, Ivy, come on, steady on. You oughtn't to go saying things like that. Yeah, I think Gail made a very good move as it happened. Yes, and it strikes me when it comes to business and investments. I mean, you haven't got the sense you were born with. Well, at least I don't live over some so-called grotty cafe. I do not go chasing brass. And all right, I might not dress up like you and your so-called mate here, but everything I've got on, I pay for out of my own pocket. I I'll clip them later. Why 
an idea. It's a flaming miserable. Oh, it's jealousy, love. They see someone with a bit of class, a bit of style, and they go green. <laughs> I've had it all, don't worry. Hello? Yeah, just a minute. Now then, who am I talking to? Kenneth Barlow, husband and father, or editor Barlow, on the trail of a scoop. I need something on this day nursery stuff. Oh, yeah, it's the fearless news hound again, is it? Wearing your green eye shade, I take it, plus sleeve garters and a snap brim fedora. Uh, ease up, love, the joke's over. I think Tracy had the last word on that. I just need a quote. Oh, can you know that's impossible? Oh, you've been gagged? I never said that. I just mean it's daft you asking me for quotes, given that we're married. Well, what's that got to do with anything? I mean, the readers don't know or care. Look, you're against the nursery being closed, so why not say so? Look, I'll make my comments to the committee, thank you very much. Now, would you mind removing your foot from the door and letting me get on? Look, let's meet for lunch. Business and pleasure. All right, all right, forget it. Oh, by the way, uh, I'll be late home tonight. Work's piling up here. Oh, yeah? Working late at the office, eh? That's a classic. Which hat are you wearing? Your correspondence? Oh, sorry, no, that's shoes, isn't it? Huh? Just a joke. Yeah, and a damn silly one. Oh. Hello, love. Waiting for service, are you? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, my husband, Mr. Webster, he runs this garage. Oh, I left you watching the shop, has he? Uh, if so, join the club. Well, it won't be a minute. He's just gone to wash his hands. But then, well, we are going out for our dinner, so... And where's Mark? Um, he's gone out, but he'll be back about two-ish, I should say. See, you have good lunch hours, then. Taking you for a bite, is he, Kevin? Um, well, as a matter of fact, he's taking me for a driving lesson, but we'll probably get a snack or something on our way. How nice for you. Must be very convenient, him, not being on clock or out. <laughs> please, please, stop. Oh, this is Casey. Oh, are you? Well, oh, you've not met Sal, have you? Well, this is Sally. This is Jean Casey. Oh, you're Mark's mum. Gosh, you don't look old enough. It's car auctions, love. They do wonders for your complexion, I'm told. Mind, you should see the picture in the attic. Any road. I mustn't get in the way, must I? Not that I realised we were running a driving school. Hey? Plus, I understood it were three quarters for dinner, not all afternoon. Or is that just why Big Brother's not watching? We're going ten minutes up the road. Sally will drive. What's wrong with that? And what's the sky when you get back? Manga conversions, is it? You and our Mark? Firm's time, firm's gear. No way. No, don't kid me, Kevin. Right little holiday you've got planned, eh? Well, Tom's out of the road. Out is with Mrs. Skylarking with no bangers. Way, Give our Mark his instructions, did you? Soap soap your ma'am. I get tollers away, so now is our big then, chance. If you must know, this banger stunt was your Mark's idea. Well, I heard a different story. Mark reckons you talked him into it. Yeah? Well, that's a downright flaming lie. Well, look. I came here with an open mind, but I get the distinct impression I'm being taken advantage of. Kevin's not like that, Mrs. Kevin. maybe. And maybe him and Mark best sort this out. But just get this straight. While my husband's away, I'm running things. Now, Tom wouldn't buy any monkey tricks, and neither will I. So think on. A flaming kid! <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm oh, thank you. Hey, uh, what's this Prince Charles thing? I reckon we're due for a royal visit. Pardon? Well, he was due to come, weren't he? To all the flaming communists on the council, put the flaming oar in. Oh, I don't think the story had much truth in it, Mr Duckworth. Well, it was in Ken Barlow's paper. I read it this morning, out on the floor, doing my shoes on. You're not telling me that Ken Barlow is printing lies and rumours, are you? Well, not exactly. Just distorting the real picture to make headlines. Corruption is everywhere. The power mad have got no scruples. Oh, I wouldn't go so far as that. It, it's simply that Kenneth has the Gazette free sheet to contend with these days. But well, he's no excuse for gutter journalism, Emily. I never thought, you know, I never thought Gail could be so hard. She used to be such a pleasant girl, didn't she? Yeah, it shook me, but I'll tell you so much, she'd have to go on her bended knees. Uh, oh, uh, same again, Mr. Flat, all of it. Now, don't tell me you are talking about our Gail. You know, she rules that cafe with the rod of iron. Well, but she's got brass in it. I mean, she can't be tolerated slackers now for this. She's got enough on with that Alma. Hey, hey, she's seen Phyllis off. <laughs> hey? She'll find out. Youngsters don't want hard work today. <laughs> They're not fetched up to it. Giving that some study, aren't you? Looking for the secret of life or what? It's what's called nursing it. Yeah. 
I'll get you one on the house. You look as though you need a bit of nourishment. Don't they feed you at the duck well? Ah, well, yeah, now and again. It's all a bit slapdash, but to tell you the truth, I've not been much interested in food, you know, since my exams. Yeah. And now the jury's out and I'm waiting for the verdict. Can you give me ladies? Oh, yeah. Put another scotch in there, please. Hello. 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 Hi. Fancy you being here, I, um, I thought you left the country or something. Well, I wasn't trying to do a bunk or anything. As a matter of fact, I was going to phone you. Never mind, you are forgiven. Anyway, now we've found each other, if uh, you're free for lunch, so am I. Oh, yeah. Scotch. What else was it, love? Uh, vodka and pineapple juice. Right. Mike, I am shaken to the core. You have forgotten my poison. Pardon? But it's G&T, not vodka and pineapple. Um, anyway, I suppose I'd be able to force it down. Yeah, love. Uh, that's right, keep the change. Look, uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm with someone. But uh, it was nice to see you. Double nice. And that's Jen. <laughs> Never mind, love. She's got the fella, but when it comes to a bus pass, you'll be there first. <laughs> Don't kid me, son. You give your mum a right flaming tail, and the upshot is I got my cars marked. She thinks I'm up to all sorts well, of it. talk to her, I'll put her straight. Yeah, well, you better have, because you've got me right in it. Listen, it wasn't meant like that. She just got one end of the stick. Oh, look, she was doing her nails at the time. That was in when she's doing her nails. Oh, off again. You think I'm gonna buy that? You must think I'm soft. Look, I just thought, I me mean, dead out of the road, I could get this banger stuff look, swinging. You must live in a dream world, you, you clown. I mean, apart from anything else, converting bangers costs big money. It's peanuts, Kev. I get the car for now. Look, it's top white, 600. Listen, King Midas. Look, if we were partners, I'd get the car for nothing. It's just 300 in and we're 50 50. Oh, we have done our sums, haven't we? It's all glass out, internal tank, safety arms. Listen, but... I'm saying now, so you've told your mum that this wasn't my idea. Right, I'll talk to her tonight. I've got a better idea. You can see this after. Oh, she's at the car lot. Look, we've got some spares what need picking up. You can pop in on the way back. But I can say you want to leave the team. Listen, just tell her it was your idea out your own stupid head. You better take the keys in case I get a call out. But I can say you're interested. Listen, just get me off the hook, that's all. Honestly, I could have died. I could have expired right there on the spot. Oh, how awful. I mean, there he was, standing at the bar, seemingly alone. I mean, he ordered a drink. I mean, how was I to know? Well, of course you'd think it were for you. Who was the girl? Oh, some little bimbo he clicked up with, I oh. suppose. But what really made me sick was Ivy standing there smirking. Oh. I mean, not to mention that old bag I just fired. Uh, were he glad to see you? Well, I didn't really get close enough to check that out. <laughs> no, but listen, there were there was something in his voice. All is not lost. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, I've been playing it pretty subtle so far. I mean, I don't want to do out obvious. Suppose I have a word with Alpha. Oh, God, no! no I, I won't mention you. I'll uh, just suggest it's about time we had a little bit of a do at our house. Hey, go on, you're being brilliant so far. I get him to invite Mike and then just slip your name in. Hey, I like it. Upshot being you'll be there as a big surprise. In fact, I'll bake a cake, you can burst out of it. <laughs> Yes, but what if he won't accept? Oh, come on. Mike's quite friendly with Alfie. And he knows we'll put a good meal on. Mm. But come on, his social calendar can't be that crowded. Leave it to me, I'll be in touch. All right. The yeah. <laughs> lady's doing some tripping about. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, she's entitled to, isn't she? At least she keeps herself to herself. Minds her own business. Hey, Mum. Hey, no price on this. How much are you expecting for it? Never mind that. What about this job you're supposed to have? Oh, you've asked me to call. To look for bangers, is that it? A bit more soft soap? Well, I've warned him. No right, Mum. He encouraged you to pester me as if I hadn't gotten up on me plate. Look, it was a little white line. What? What? I held it on a bit, sort of anticipated. You get me rushing down there, giving the lad a flea in his ear. Making myself out to be a right old bird. Oh, I said he was interested. Well, he is. You said he sprung the idea on you. Yeah, I made it up. Look, but I was right. He doesn't want to team up on this. I'll check, you know. Fair enough. How many birthdays coming up? Yeah. I'm a fixed. Your birthday's weak, so. And your dad'll raise the roof. Your dad's off doing his own thing. He's off on business. Business? Go fishing? Or your left ear running show? I thought he was your own boss, man. I mean, if everything's got to be reported back to me dad, well, it's a pity, isn't it? He's dead with some jokes. You won't believe it. Oh, this is your English teacher, is it? 
Mr. Percival, a great wit, I don't think. Perhaps it's Can torture. Hi, hi. Come it's all go. I've got two meetings tomorrow, but somehow the wash has to get done. Oh. Tracy, put the kettle on, love. Take a pew. Give well, us all the hot gossip. Actually, I only called to see Ken. Oh, well, naturally. Anybody who calls to see me is either homeless or helpless or <laughs> hopeless. Oh. Was it important? Oh, it's the hospital, friends. Our biannual bring and buy. I called at the recorder with the advert, but there was no sign of life. Sure. Positive. He was gone sick, so I didn't really expect That's that there funny. would be any. But sure, Ken said he was working late. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, leave it with me. I'll see he gets it. Oh, right. Um, typical job from Mr. Percival's Gratty Gag Boot. Newspaper office. Chat with a rubber hammer running round hitting people on the bounce. Who's he? The head hitter. Can you believe it? Even the crawls couldn't manage a giggle. <laughs> Bye, Eccles. You're not a bad cook when you put your mind to it, you know. Oh, you try Ooh. telling folks around here that. Well, I don't know. I mean, we never entertain, do we? So they've not to go on, have they? Well, I'm not losing weight. That will say mm. something. What I need is a, a showcase. A stage. You ought to invite people round for me. You well. Do I get a bit of good, no? Girl, look, follow. Well, it's simple. I mean, uh, we could start by inviting, uh, what's her name? Alma Sedgwick. You what? Well, seeing as she's Gail's partner, I mean, we ought to keep on good terms with her, don't you think? Well, I suppose you're right. Eh? We couldn't just ask her by herself, though, could we? Oh, no, 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 obviously not. No. Have to be someone who wouldn't feel left out. I mean,. Someone who were also in business. Oh, hold up. I see where you're going. Well, Alma fancies Mike Baldwin. It's a plot, isn't it? Oh, do you know, you've got a very nasty, suspicious mind, oh. Alpha, but you really have. Anyway, Mike Baldwin is a natural for Alma. Yeah, he'd never buy it, though. He's no mug, you know. Anyway, what's he ever done to me that should inflict Alma Sedgwick on him? Look, he'd buy it if you didn't let on she were coming till after he'd accept it. Not let on? You must be joking. I couldn't do that. I'd be too embarrassed. All right, take hands off the tray. Hey, hey. Well, you can do the washing up then, indefinitely. Look, Audrey, a dinner party by all means, but matchmaking on the side, no. Now, what's wrong with a bit of matchmaking? Don't you want to see folks happy? Anyway, I could just do with a wedding. There's now what else going on around here. <sighs> Winding down after all the big business pressures? They've been giving you lessons on how to send up the customers, has she? Oh, so you don't want me company? I can take a hint. Hello, love. Oh, good evening, Mr. Baldwin. Working late again, are we? That's right. Peace rates don't fix themselves, do they? I'm going to get you, love. Uh, could you get me two bottles of lager to take out, thank you? And two packets of plain crisps. Right, love. <laughs> Nearly had you trapped this dinner, didn't you? I take it that by that you mean Alma, the lady with impeccable taste in fellas. Well, she's got a beady eye on you, I'd watch out. That's all right, I'm a big boy now. Got all my Boy Scout badges. Uh, yes, and you're going to need them. When that madam is not chasing men, she's yes, chasing money. And I reckon that you're a combined operation. Why all the bile? What's Alma ever done to you? Well, it's no secret. You asked about it. She's only got our gale to cough up £9,000 for this tin pot varnish mix. Sound like good business for Gail? Yes, it's the crafty way Alma's gone about it that's got me. She's got Audrey Roberts on her side, who has got Alf towing the line, and between them they've got our gale jumping through hoops. I've got the point, you know. Alma and Audrey, they're as thick as thieves these days. I was in the shop earlier today, and I couldn't help noticing that they got their heads together. It wasn't being nosy, but I gathered that they were setting up some sort of a meal for Alma. Oh, she's got some chap she's got eyes on who's proving just a little bit slippery. So this little web was being spun, if you get my meaning. Seems like you're safe, then. I'd say you're first reserve, like. Oh, dear, I'll do it. Where's the spring gun? Knock, knock. It's right, man. Never happen unless your hands are full of money. you? Right, big gob. Well, now you're there, make yourself useful. Hold this. You brought the keys round and there's no need. God, what a horse. We're gonna have a break, Matt. Do you want a beer? Yeah, please. I've seen me, man. I think, right? Good. Yeah, she told me to apologise for being a bit bolty like Yeah, well, after what you said, I'm not surprised. Anyway, the thing is, if you start leading the team, she give us green light. She promised us a car. So how about it? I don't know. Resident genius, no? Well, whether he wants to go banger racing, I don't suppose it's your favourite sport either. I should hope it isn't. Sally's not even passed the test yet. Do you know how it's about lynching? Hey, hands off. I need my mechanic. Mechanic? If I'm in this, I'm driving. And what, if it's not a silly question, am I going to be doing? Oh, 
Oh, come on, love, it's a man's sport. Oh, I get it, you don't need brains then. No, it takes nerve and driving yeah. skill. Plus all our spare time and all our spare cash. Yeah, well, get me name down. Oh, come on, love, you can't be serious. Come on, misery, God, stop with such an old codger. I want to live a bit and all. Come on, get this Uber fixed. Go on, shit yourself off. He'll be on his bike in a minute. Look, let's just make a plan, shall we? I'm not going to tell him that Alma's invited, right? Oh, just play it by ear. Go on, you miss him. There's always tomorrow. He may be out of town or tomorrow. I say, Mike, you! Don't shoot off. Alfie wants the word. What's that? The Army Rig grocery bill, am I? Oh, don't be daft. No. Uh, have a jar. No, thanks. I've had me quite a uh, well, we're having this um, this sort of dinner party. There's no sort of about it. No, well, it's tomorrow anyway, and, and, and you're invited. It's a bit short notice, but we had this sudden rush of blood, you know. Now you are free, aren't you? Well, that depends. Am I the only guest? I mean, I'd be honoured if I was. No, we, we, we did think we'd make a foursome. Oh, well, that's great, because we've got a date tomorrow night. Charming girl, intelligent, mixes well. All right to bring her along? Well, I, I mean, I don't... Uh, yes, but... Uh, oh, good. Uh, right, uh, expect us tomorrow night, then. Be good. Oh, Give me strength, Alf. Oh, you made a right muck of that. You said play it by ear. Oh, I forgot you were tone deaf. Hi. Hiya. Hi, Sal. Hi, Kelly. You know what? That looks almost good enough to eat. Oh, get lost, Kelly. You were in my display. Oh, come on, he won't miss one. Oh, you're going to get me shot, you, are you? Can't be getting on the wrong side of the teacher now, can I? Just one more week, then that's it, by the shouting. What? Exam results and that. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Good morning. Hiya. Hi, Mr. Baldwin. Right, I'm off. I'll see you. Right. Oh, Kelly? Yeah? What do you reckon to this banger racing that Mark and Kevin are on about? What about it? Do you reckon it's a fella's game or what? <laughs> I reckon it's a mug's game. Here you go. I'm glad you popped in, actually. Why, business that bad, is it? No, I wanted a word with you about uh, tonight, you know. Oh, that's right. We didn't fix the time, did we? So, uh, eight o'clock, OK? Uh, yeah, something like that. Oh, great. Uh, oh, no, actually, it wasn't that that I wanted to speak to you about. Oh? No, it's was, it was about this, this companion that's coming with you. you. You know, the lady that's coming with you. Oh, I see what you mean. Well, I wouldn't worry in that school. She's quite a respectable girl. She won't disgrace herself. She's charming, intelligent, nice legs. She's even been house-trained. So, uh, see you later, all right? Yeah. You'll have to get your skates on if you're on the left. Ready when you are. Shouldn't you have done that last night? Don't have to be until tomorrow anywhere. How come you were so wet on last night? Oh, I had to see someone on newspaper business. Oh? I don't think that's any of your business. That's what you told Mum, isn't it? Look, do you want to lift the school, or don't you? I'm coming, I'll just get my bag. Is my gym kit ready? Ah, yes, on your bed, love. Oh. Yeah, and I wonder who put her up to all that then. What? Quizzing me about where I was last night. Well, some children do take an interest in what their parents do, you know, Ken. Oh, come on, love, it's obviously been going on to her. Look, I don't have to go on to Tracy about anything. She has got eyes in her head, she can hear what's going on, and she's not a little girl anymore. Yeah, well, I just don't want her to get the idea that all this business is driving a wedge between us. And is it? Oh, not as far as I'm concerned, no. I've got my job to do, you've got yours. As long as Tracy sees it that way, there's no problem, right? Right. See if I forgot things sorted. Oh, well, don't stand on the doorstep. Come on, folks, I'll think you're selling double glazing. <laughs> well, <sighs> I did get out to have another go at Mike. And? Let's just say he'd never have made the diplomatic call. Oh, so Mike's still coming with God knows who then. I'm sorry, love, oh. honest. Well, not as sorry as I am. Anyway, tar for trying, anyhow. Look, I was just going to have a cup of coffee. Do you fancy a cup? Oh, well, I shouldn't really. I said I'd only be gone ten minutes. Come on. Oh, go on, then. It's likely to be the best offer I get today. <laughs> just winding you up, mate. No, she's serious, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. She haven't passed the test yet. That doesn't worry, Sally. She reckons if I'm in... Cheesy. Yeah, suppose it's summer tonight. If your missus wants to take an interest in what you're doing. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah, I've got a lot to learn about women, you. Hey, you've seen some of them birds at meeting. 
Finn, he likes the jelly at 100 yards. Legs all blurred to their armpits. <laughs> Go south seeing them and all. She's not interested in racing, mate. She's there to keep an eye on you. You know, I'm really going to catch you two on the hop one of these days. You might even be working. No danger. Do you want a break? No, thanks. I prefer tea that doesn't taste of some oil. Yeah, hey, tea doesn't taste of some oil. Coffee tastes of some oil. Tea tastes of break. Oh, he's not joking either. So, what can we do for you? More a matter of what I can do for you, I think. Well, if you come to have a go as again, well, ma'am. You'll talk yourself out of it if you don't shut up and listen. I'm in a dash. If you're still interested, I've got a car you can have. Ma'am, you're a star. What is it? Well, never mind that. Just get it picked up if you want it. Taking up valuable space. Tony will sort you out. Cheers, ma'am. Just get it off that lot as soon as you can. See ya. See you, Mrs. Casey. Well, we've cracked it. Bye, eh, girl? That beats egg and chips any day. Eh? <laughs> that is your lunch, I take it. Uh, this is the latest instalment for tonight, if you believe it. You mean there's more? The only half the stock, and all for somebody we don't know. And whose fault's that? Oh, don't you start. <laughs> Hello, Phyllis. Gail. Well, hang on a minute. I only wanted a word. To ask me to come back to cafe. Well, no. Oh, well, there's not more to be said, isn't there, Gail? Good day. Tommy? All right. Mum, tell you we'll be coming. Yeah. Good job you didn't come a couple of minutes earlier. Put some eyes in it. Oh, big deal. A couple of golden oldies, wondering whether to trade up something a bit more modern. Like a Model T. <laughs> hey, this isn't bad. Now, hang on. Before you get carried away, try that for size. Hey? Hey, come on, Tom. No way. That's the one your mum said. But we want it for banger racing, mate. We're not forming our own tank regiment. Right, Kev? <laughs> Dead right, mate. No, this is the one we want. Yeah, definitely. Now, hang on. Look, don't worry about me, mum. I squared it with her. Right, come on, Keys. Some of us have got work to do. Hello, love. Where have you Hi. been? Look, if you expect your dinner to be on the table, you're going to be disappointed. I've only just got back from the hairdresser. Oh, it's all right. There's no rush. I told Sally I'd be about an hour and a half anyway. There may not be a rush for you. You haven't got to get a meal ready, have you? Do you know I've got this split in here? Oh. If you want to make yourself useful, shove a couple of rounds of cheese on toast under the grill. Cheese on toast? I haven't time for anything else, Alfie. Oh, I thought of something else if you've got to get an all. What? Whiskey. Whiskey? Well, that's Mike's tipple, isn't it? I mean, he's quite partial to a drop of that, uh, what is it, Glen thing, I mean. Flipping heck, Audrey. We won't be able to avoid cheese on toast at this rate. Look, why don't we just tell him it was all a bad mistake? Mm. Do you know, nothing would make me happier, believe me. Well, then. Well, go on, what are you waiting for? You should catch him at the Rovers about now. Me? Well, you don't expect me to go, do you? <laughs> it was your idea. <sighs> You mucked it up, Alpha. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll see that the cheese on toast, yeah. anyway. Mmm. Pan of some PTO? On your lawson today, are you? It looks like it. Sally signed up at the uh, shop. Oh, it wasn't Sally I was thinking about. Where's your mate? Ah, that's it, at the garage. You work that lad too hard, you know, I'll be worn out. No strength left for anything else. What? You're joking. It's like a perpetual motion he is when he gets going. Mind you, that can be a problem at times. Must be your approach, Kev. I don't seem to have that problem with fellas. What problem? Getting them going. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, me. Please take and give me love. Oh, thanks, lovely. I'll pay for it. Okay. Your mate signed the pledge, you see. Hey? Vera. Seems pleasantly quiet near for once. Well, she's had some shopping to do. Shopping? <laughs> I must be paying you a lot too much. Oh, I wouldn't think so. Not for one minute, Mr. Baldwin. I mean, come on, you're an expert when it comes to business, aren't you? Even when it's not your business. Look, if you're on about Gail and that cafe, remember it was her that came to me for advice, all right? Oh, and you gave it, didn't you? Just a pity you couldn't see it from her point of view. I did. It seemed like a good investment for Gail. I meant from the point of view of a young mother with two young children. Yes, Salma. Oh, uh, GMT, please. Jack, yeah? have you got any champagne in the cellar? You know, the stuff that Alec keeps for special occasions. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Right, put a bottle to one side, will you? Pick it up about half past seven. Chill it if you can. Do you know what she charges for that book? I've told you, it's a special occasion. Ah, uh, are you waiting for that to hatch out, oh, Jack? Sorry, yeah, sorry. Sorry, I'll get that. No, 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 there's go. no need. I was hoping to bump it into you. Oh? Well, yeah, I got myself in a bit of a mess, you see. I've been invited out tonight for dinner at the Roberts. Really? Yeah, the, yeah, God knows why, but there it is anyway. I said I'd be bringing along a charming, intelligent companion with nice legs. And I don't see what that's got to do with me. The problem is I accepted it without asking you first. Me? Who else? 
I mean, I know it's a bit late to ask you, but... Uh, well, well, it is well, you've got account. something else in there, <laughs> Well... Well, in that case, uh, OK. Hey, what? You don't think I'd do that to you, do you? Do what? Drop you in it. Drop me in it? Mm, charming, intelligent, oh, yeah, nice legs. I mean, where are you going to find someone else like that? <laughs> right, pick up a half past seven, OK? <laughs> I'll see you. Me? About this. Weatherfield Council has been asked to look urgently into the problem of finding additional temporary accommodation for homeless young people. And the recorder has it from a reliable source that a short list of possible buildings has already been prepared, with the community centre in Coronation Street at the top of the list. What on earth is going on? Nothing's going on. The council have discussed the problem. Yeah, the community centre was mentioned, but that's all there is to it. Well, that's certainly not the impression you get from this. Oh, I agree. And I suggest you take it up with Ken. It's his story. And where did he get it from? Well, he certainly didn't get it from me. And now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a phone call to make. Fiona, could I speak to Ken? It's Deirdre. Oh, I see. Did he say how long he'd be? Yes, I do want to speak to him, just as soon as he gets back. Bye. You going back to dust? You done? No problem. Blimey, you've not let grass grow today, have you? Well, as soon as we get this one, as soon as we get out on that beauty outside. What's his case, Kevin. Ma'am? Well, it's still in one piece. That's something to be thankful for, I suppose. Eh? Hey? The escort you took. Uh, yeah. We, uh, planned starting on it tonight. Well, you'd better think of something else to occupy your time, hadn't you? Because that car won't be there. Why? That isn't the car I said you could have, and well, you know it. I mean, it's just what we want. The other one was too big. Look, I'll square it with me, Dad. Your Dad's away, and until he gets back, I'm running the show, and I'm telling you, you're not having that car. But I could sell it half a dozen times over. Come on, the keys. Mum, it's what we want. The keys. Hang on, Mrs. Casey. How much do you want for it? Oh, forget it, Kev. It must be getting on for a grand. You know what it'd fetch? More than what your mum paid for, I'm interested in. Huh. Oh, go on. I'm cutting my own throat, but call it a straight six. Six hundred? Well, take it or leave it. I'm not doing myself any favours. Okay, thanks. We'll, uh, we'll have a chat about it. There's nothing to chat about. Look, it's what we want, isn't it? I'm not standing here while you two argue the toss. I'll leave it with you till tomorrow and let me know what you want to do. Until then, you don't lay a finger on it. Okay. Thanks, Mrs. Casey. I'll see, see you. Ya, see ya. There's no way we can afford that, not having anything left to spend well, on it. Just calm down, will you? Let's just think about it, all right? So when's she having this party? Saturday. We're going, we're going to the ice cream can around for a burger, so we can stop the night at her house. I can't count her, Mum. Yeah, as long as it's all right with her, Mum. Of course it is. Are you going upstairs? I'll give it here. I'm just getting a drink of orange. I'll get it. Right. Double eight two seven. How are you? You know? And you don't know what time you'll be home? Right, I'll tell her. Who is it, Tracy? Right, bye, bye Dad. It was Dad. Dad, why didn't you tell me? Well, it was only a message to say to you later on. I wanted to speak to him. What are you doing? I'm bringing him back. He wasn't at his office, he was in a phone box. Right. How do I look? Fantastic. Really? This dress doesn't make me look fat, does it? Of course it doesn't. No, hey, I don't remember seeing that before. You should wear that more often. I only got it this afternoon, didn't I? You, what, you mean you bought that for tonight as well? Oh, come on. You don't want Mike and his guests thinking you keep me in rags, do you? Flipping heck, Audrey. How much is this lot going to cost eventually? Oh, right. That'll be them now. At mm. eight, did you put the bread rolls in to warm? Oh, no. Well, I'll get the door. You see to the rolls. Go oh, oh, on. All right. Hi. Sorry if we're a bit early. Only my companion couldn't wait to get in. Oh, my. Oh. <laughs> so you're the man.
mystery girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who else? Come on, come on. Well, what a surprise. Yes, life's full of little surprises, isn't it? <laughs> Go to room. Alpha's in the kitchen. Oh, all right. <laughs> Sure. Oh, oh it was a pleasure. Hey, did I look surprised to see you? Oh, I'm made. I thought for a minute I'd come to the wrong house. <laughs> yes, I'll put this in the fridge if I was you. I asked Jack to chill it, but it, by the feel of it, he's had it under his armpits. Oh, hey, champagne, eh? He shouldn't have bothered, you know. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. Oh, but look who might spot with it. Oh, Alma. Yeah, she nearly didn't make it. I left it a bit late inviting her. It just shows you, you should never take anything for granted in this world. Eh, hey, Audrey? <laughs> Tonight, yeah, it looks like it. Martin and Jenny have gone to the pictures and Kevin's at the garage working out how much it's going to cost him to get to this banger racing. Oh, they're serious about it then? Yeah, I'm more fool then. What a waste of time and money. Oh, no, I reckon it's dead exciting myself. Are you talking about me again? In a manner of speaking, I suppose we are. All bangers that have seen better days. This eh. business that Kevin and Mark are getting themselves into, I reckon they'll think it'll make them look dead macho. Oh, wasting the time, son. You've either got it or you've not. I never had you down to be interested in banger racing. Just goes to show how wrong you can be then, doesn't it? There you are, love. Thanks, Betty. Okay, look. Well, I am glad you could get out for an hour, love. What's so important about me getting out tonight, anyway? I just thought you'd enjoy it. After the day you must have had. You must have practically been tied to that cafe. While Madam, of course, was out swanning like a lady of leisure. She was in here at dinner, you know. Yes, I do know that, I. But it's your busiest time. Yes, well, it was all to do with tonight, if you must know. This dinner party my mum's having. Dinner party? Well, don't tell me you haven't heard. Now, how should I know what order gets up to, love? I mean, I'm not her keeper. So who's going? Just Alma and a fella. Fella? Nobody we know, I take it. You should do. You've been working next to him all day. Oh, thanks, Alf. Oh. Audrey, that meal was delicious. <laughs> They were all down to Alfie, really. Hey? He kept from under my feet and let me get on with it. Oh. <laughs> well, here's to you and thank you for a fabulous evening. Oh, yes, thanks, lovely. It's not over yet, you know. No, of course it didn't, no. Hey, let's sit in some comfortable chairs, shall we? Oh, put some music on, Alfie. Liven things up a bit. Eh, <laughs> uh, no, we've got to consider the guests. I mean, they might oh. just want to sit quietly and oh, talk. Oh, no, go on, I'll put some music on. What have you got? Well, that's the problem, really. I mean, you know, if I won't suitable. <laughs> he means ever since I made a flower pot order out of his manta <laughs> <laughs> If you want music, you can have it. I've got an open invitation to a great little club in town. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Well, uh, not now. May may maybe another time. No, listen, if you want to go, you go. Don't worry about Audrey and me. I've got to get up early tomorrow anyway. No, I mean all of us. Oh, all of us. Oh, well, that that's different then. <laughs> what are we waiting for? <laughs> hey, hey, hang on a minute. That is my treat to thank you for a fabulous meal, Mike. <gasps> I could just use your phone or order a cab. Help right? yourself. <laughs> Are you sure you don't mind me nipping off? No, you'll get going to think me and Jack will come with this long old hey, you want me to watch at the bus stop? No, she doesn't. You go and collect some glasses. Well, that's better. And I'm only telling. Bye! Dado. <laughs> See you, you two. See you, Tina. See you, Tina. So, how much are you short, then? A couple of hundred, I reckon. Oh, you've really set your heart on this, haven't you? Yeah, we have. What? There's no point in skinning ourselves, is there? To a point where we couldn't afford to spend anything on it. It's a good buy and all, is it? Yeah, great buy. I mean, mechanically, it's sound. Getting it rock bottom price. Like I said, no point in skinning ourselves. I know the way. No way? I still got the Building Society book, Kev. I could give you the rest of the money. You? Yeah, well, why not? I'd get as much fun out of this as you would. Oh, you're not still going on about that driving, are you? Did I say that? Do you want this money, or don't you? No strings. Oh, if it's going to bother you that much, Kev, I'm sorry no, I mentioned it's it. It's not, so it's not. You're right. You're the little bells, what are you? I just didn't have time, honest, I had too much on. 
Oh, what like, Cat? Like yesterday dinner time in the Rovers? Yesterday? Ooh! Well, you seem to have your time cut out there, what? Attractive, 30 ish. Oh, I'm with you. Shame to be a buyer for one of the biggest wholesale outlets in Yorkshire. <laughs> but anyway, how are things working out now you got Gail? Oh, you? much better. Smart kid, that you know. Oh, you don't have to tell me. She certainly knows how to strike a hard bargain. Still, I suppose she's got you to thank for that. She didn't need any help in that direction, believe you and me. But what I don't understand is, why did you need a, a partner anyway? Well, let's just say we needed each other, shall we? Um, you, uh, you feel up to dancing again? Me? I'll dance you off your feet any night of the week. We'll see about that. Come on. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, love. Hold up again. Newspaper business, I suppose. Uh, right, yeah. Managed to top that, have you? Oh. Well, I must admit, that is one of my better efforts. Better efforts? Getting hold of half-truths, blowing them up out of all proportion, making me look like a, a sneak and a cheat. Oh, come on, love. There isn't a thing in that story that isn't based on fact, and there isn't a thing that implicates you. I can't see what you're getting so upset about. I am getting upset, Ken, because whatever you reckon, folk have already started pointing the finger. So unless you're prepared to say where you did get that story from, I am in the firing line, whether you accept it or not. So, where did you get your story from? I can't tell you that. Oh, I didn't think for one minute that you would. I mean, when it comes to your precious principles or your wife, there's just no contest, is there? All right, double eight two seven. Uh, yes, yes, she is. Who's calling? All right. Councillor Crossley. Hello, Graham. What can I do for you? As if I didn't know. Yes, I have seen the recorder. No, I don't know where Ken got it from, but I can assure you he did not get it from me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've uh, I've had a busy day. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Yes, I have no doubt questions will be asked. And that's not the first call I've had like that today. People are that ready to jump to their own conclusion. That's their problem, isn't it? No, Ken, it isn't. It's mine. <laughs> so you actually handle it on your own from here on in. No danger for the great team. Oh, I'm glad you think so. I better get sleeping beauty on. He won't be happy till he's tucked up with his cocoa. <laughs> so where is he then? Gone to be nipped home through the stock take in the minute me after. What? <laughs> Bad, Mr. Roberts. I'm a touchy rheumatism, is it? I'm a martyr to rheumatism myself first thing in the morning. Still, what can you expect at our age? It's not rheumatism, Percy, and I'm not your age. Oh. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Roberts. Ah, oh, likely it will. <laughs> he does look bad, doesn't he? You should have seen him earlier on. Honestly, he couldn't get out of bed on his own. I had to pull him up to a sitting <laughs> position. It's like raising the Mary Roll. <gasps> Not feeling well, is he, Mr. Roberts? Oh, you could say that, Percy. What's the matter with him? Heavy night last night. Discoing. <laughs> disco? Yeah. They ought to be banned discos. <laughs> you know, I blame the Beatles for the problems with today's young people. If they had to make that sort of music popular, there wouldn't be all this jitterbugging and violence. There was jitterbugging long before Beatles, Mr. Sugged in. The Americans brought it over. Right, ah, they've got a lot to answer for and all. Tell me this with a young lady. Why do youngsters today feel obliged to wander around the streets with a fizzy drink in their hand. And you should know better, Mr. Roberts, a businessman and an ex-counsellor. 
so now you know. Well, you've been talking about last night, have you? I just said that you went disco in. I thought it might improve your image. You know, Alf Roberts, the dirty dancer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, come on, don't pretend you didn't enjoy it because you did. Do you know, Sally, we couldn't keep him off the floor. That's rubbish. You, Mike Baldwin couldn't believe his eyes, nor could a lot of other folks either. Are you saying I made a spectacle of myself? I am saying that you enjoyed yourself in an extrovert way. Do you know, like a horse when it's let out of the stable into the field. Yeah, well, I'm not going discoing again, not ever, for anybody. I feel as if I've been hit by a ten-ton oh. truck. <laughs> Oh, poor Mr. Roberts. Hey, how did Alma go on, by the way, or Mr. Baldwin? Did she make any progress? Progress? She should be home and dry. She had enough opportunity <laughs> last night. And Alma doesn't usually waste opportunities. Oh, oh, oh. Good afternoon, Alma. Oh, now, there's no need to be sarcastic, Gail. You've got to be very kind to me today. I'm feeling very fragile. I would like a cup of a very strong black coffee, please, Christine, love. Yes, well, I'm afraid hangovers don't rate much sympathy with me, Alma. Because I'm not in a position to get one myself these oh. days. Well, I'm not saying I regret last night. Far from it. Oh, all went according <laughs> to plan, did it? Very. Well, come on then. Give us the sordid details. Oh, no, I don't want to corrupt Christine. She's too young for full frontal conversations, aren't you, love? No. Well, actually, he behaved like a perfect gentleman. Oh, dear, how disappointing. No, 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 he was taking his cue from me. You behaved like a perfect gentleman. <laughs> no, no, I just didn't want to give him the impression that I was a pusher, <laughs> or did I? It's a bit late for that, Alma, where you've been stalking him. Oh. Like a cat after a robin. Yes, and now I am ready to pounce. Oh, thank you, love, you've saved me life. Yes, well, don't do any pouncing today, Alma, will you? You've got enough on your plate doing your whack here, and then come in with me to sign up at the solicitor's. That's if you're still interested in something as mundane as a business partnership. <laughs> and when I do pounce, it'll be the full erotic food and champagne in the flat bit, disguised as a flat warming, of course. I wish you'd stop that tuneless whistling. Sorry, didn't realize I was doing it. Still, you've got plenty to whistle about, haven't you? <sighs> I'll not be provoked, Deirdre. Never go to work on a row. It's bad for the Digestive and creative processes. Creative processes? What did you ever create in that rag of yours, apart from fairy stories? <laughs> Vulgar abuse won't provoke me either. Seriously, though, Kat. I'm deadly serious. You haven't been serious since this whole thing blew up. You've been smirking most of the time. Smirking? I wouldn't know how to. You've got the sort of face that could smirk in an east wind, Ken Barlow. Vulgar abuse again. But what am I going to do? When I walk into that town hall this morning, because everybody will be pointing the finger at me, I know they will. Oh, mainly behind your back, and you can cope with that. If they accuse you to your face, just deny it. Or change the subject like a good politician. But why should I have to? The only crime you're guilty of is being married to a journalist. Oh, well, uh, that is one way out, of course. What? Divorce me. And marry somebody with a low-profile job like a painter and decorator. Bye. Look, it's not funny, Ken. I don't like being accused of... Letting down the council, feeding you and your blinking papers secret information when I'm not doing. I wouldn't care if I was. At least then I'd probably be getting some sort of buzz out of being a mole. Now that is a credible alternative. Go on. Well, I agree it must be very galling getting all this flack for something that you're not doing. So why not do it? Start to feed me all the classified information. I can always use it and I will protect my source to the death, honest. Matter of fact, I did want to ask you about the new car park charges I've heard of. Go to work, Ken while you can still walk, because I am highly tempted to kick you in a very tender spot. Oh, all right, all right, I'm going. And, um, good luck with the town hall. <laughs> so when's Nigel Mansell and his teammate going to race in their first Grand Prix, then? Soon, Jen, soon. <laughs> hey, you'll let me know when it is, won't you? Why are you keen on racing? No, but I could get very keen on your Kev's mate, Mark. <laughs> What's his last name? Casey, he's nice in the annual room at school. You know, I think he looks dead like that lead singer out of Wet, 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 don't you oh, think? Does he, Eckers? He does. He does. <laughs> do you fancy him as well? Well, I would do if I had the energy, but I'm just too mentally exhausted after my A-levels oh. to be interested in men. It's the price you have to pay for being an intellectual. <laughs> See ya. See ya. <laughs> Is this, uh, Mark Casey married? No. Engaged? No, I don't even think he's got a girlfriend at the moment. Now, you wouldn't lie to me, would you, and have me build me hopes up, <laughs> only to have them cruelly dashed yet again? Tina, 24. Mm -hmm. oh. You know what? 
I might wander past your kid's garage on way home this afternoon and just have one of my shoe wheels come loose accidentally on purpose. That's a long way out your way. So? I hitched all the way to London to see David Boy once and I didn't even have a ticket. <laughs> see ya. Hi, hi, hi. Hello. That girl, she's mum now. Oh, not another <laughs> one. Alma's been wandering around in her days all morning. He's part hangover and part lovesick. Did you know Mike Baldwin had tender brown eyes? Mm, the trouble is they go shifty when he starts talking about brass. Can I be <laughs> awful of shit? Oh, I want four if you can spare them. We've run out of the cafe. What's this about Mike Baldwin? Don't tell me Alma still got him locked in her bedroom. He behaved like a perfect gentleman, according to Alma. Did she behave like a lady? <laughs> well, she's thinking of having a flat warming party for him, and I don't think she'd be splashing out if she'd already trapped him, knowing Alma. Oh, but did you hear that? Oh. Another fun night for us in Prospect. Oh, I Social life is suddenly picking up. <laughs> Not before time, I might say. Look, I'm telling you, what you lads need is a business manager. Yeah. Someone like you, I suppose. Well, I might just be able to fit it in. Although, I don't want to be overextending myself, Kev. I mean, if you've got too many irons in the fire, you just end up putting the fire out, don't you? Yeah. And what irons have you got going in the fire? Hey, they're all up here, mates. Brewing and bubbling and germinating. <laughs> <laughs> like a beehive inside my head, you know. But we haven't got a car finish yet. What do we need a business manager for? Because peasants like you two always need a middleman. <clears throat> for when the car is ready. For when you start racing. And for when you become famous. Now, I'm not saying that you will, of course. But I'm prepared to take the risk. Oh, thank you very much. That's all right, mate. I mean, I could, uh, I could arrange your international schedule. I could look after your publicity. To keep an eye on the finance. I don't think we'll need any help on that score. <laughs> Could shout out the birds. Hey, now you're talking. <laughs> what birds? Kev, you'll be inundated with birds when you start winning, mate. Hey, it's a very macho <laughs> sport, you know, banger racing. I just think of it this way. You'll be sort of like a uh, oily football. <laughs> hey, you'll have the girls coming up trying to rip them over. Hiya! It's only me, lads. I'm not a ghost or anything. Oh, no, 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 sir. We're just... Discussing David Gower's bowling options, actually, against the Aussies you brought the floor, though. Oh. <laughs> I brought you lunches because you're working on Carver's lunch time, yeah, aren't yeah. you? I brought you corned beef and pickled butters. Is that all right? Oh, yeah, great. You don't happen to have any spare there, do you, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were going to be here, did I? Oh, it's all right. It's just a thought. Only I've not eaten for 24 hours. No money, you see. Oh, Martin, you can have my butters if you want. He didn't take the notice of himself. His man's a cook at Crawshaw's canteen. <laughs> Live like lords in their house. Wow. He's mine, Sal. Yeah. So. Hey, I've got something to tell you. Oh, yeah? What? You're never going to guess what. I know a girl who fancies you. Yeah? See? It's already started, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Oh, nothing. Nothing, Sal. George? Morning, dear. Morning. Hang on a second. Just want to quit the Um, any reactions? You've got Ken's story in the recorder. Had a couple of hostile phone calls. Saying what? Objecting to us setting up a destitute kids' hostel at all, would you believe? I never breathed a word to Ken about it, honest. I believe you did. Only thousands wouldn't. Morning, counsellors. Lovely day. Morning. Morning, Peter. I'm not holding a secret caucus meeting, are you? <laughs> caucus of two. <laughs> oh, I nearly forgot. Another first class scoop in your husband's paper yesterday, Councillor Barlow. It read as though he's got us all fucked. Ouch. That was below the belt. But you know Peter. He thinks sarcasm's the only form of wit. Yeah, especially where women are concerned. Well, I don't have to put up with this sarcasm, chief executive or not. Hey, steady the boss. Don't make any You're looking in the pink. Well, you don't look so bad yourself. Oh, mind of a matter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get hangovers. That's why I drink a lot. Oh, I thought I thought I might have seen you in the Rovers. Nah, business lunch. <gasps> Talking of meals. Are we? Yes. Uh, can you uh, can you come to supper at my place tomorrow night? So I thought it was about time uh, I warmed the flat. Tomorrow? Mm. Well, I mean, if you've got something else on. No, it's just that it's turning into a hectic week. Mind you, I don't mind hectic weeks. <laughs> oh, I thought you didn't. So. Uh, can I, uh, can I expect you then tomorrow? Yeah, perfect. Eight o'clock? Yeah. See you then. Oh, and thanks for last night. My pleasure. It was worth all the pain. <laughs> oh. It's free now. Thank you. OK. 
Councillor Barlow, sorry I've kept you waiting. Paperwork. I'm sure it breathes in the night. Oh, sit down. So, what's the problem? If there is a problem. You. Me? What have I done? That crack you made just now when I was talking to George Burgess outside. Crack? Remark. Well, at least he said good morning. You've got a short memory. You mentioned Ken's story in the recorder yesterday. Oh, that. Well, that certainly wasn't meant to be a crack. More of a compliment. Not the way you said it, it wasn't. I think you're being oversensitive, Councillor Barlow. Though I can see why. Can you? Your husband's paper must be making life very difficult for you. That's obvious. Look, I'm not tipping him off, you know. I didn't tip him off about the hostel story or any other story. I'm sorry, I tell a lie. I inadvertently mentioned the Prince Charles business, but that taught me a lesson. Keep my mouth shut in future. Oh, it can't be easy. Living under the same roof, chatting about the day's events, pillow talk. Especially for a gas bag of a woman. It'd be causing me problems too. Look, I don't seem to be making myself clear. There isn't a problem where I'm concerned. Only circumstantial evidence. There is a leak in the town hall. My husband is the one being leaked to. Therefore, I must be the leak. In a nutshell. But I am not the leak. Several members of the council think you are. <laughs> Only several. I'm being diplomatic. As always. Now, the other newspapers think you're the leak. I've had them all on, ranting and raving about Ken getting privileged information. I am not the leak. You don't believe me either, do you? Not that I really expected you to. Well, it doesn't matter if I believe you or not. It's what they're saying in the smoke-filled rooms. Yes. Well, I'll just have to keep denying it then, won't I? That's all I can do. But I can still do without sarcastic remarks, Mr. Reynolds, from you or from anyone else. Thanks for Barlow. I'd just like to remind you of item six in the local government national code of conduct. Now, from memory, it says, as a councillor, you necessarily acquire much information that hasn't yet been made public, and as such is confidential. It is a grave betrayal of trust to use confidential information for the personal advantage of yourself or of anyone known to you. From memory, eh? Sounds to me as if you've been looking it up. If there is a betrayal of trust, a councillor can be suspended from all committee meetings. But just one other thing. Ken doesn't have to print this information he's getting. Does he? Coming back to work on the car tonight, Kev? Oh, I think I'll give it a miss tonight. Oh, Sally wants to do some housework, does she? Well, yeah. I'll do me first, yeah. But mainly at weekends. And if you're suggesting for one minute she's getting sick of me working on the car, you couldn't be more wrong. In fact, she keeps going on about having a drive herself. Mm. Half a dozen lessons. She's Alan Prost already. <laughs> Hiya. Hiya. So this is where you work? Mm-hmm. We do work here, don't we, Matt? Uh, yeah, this is the place. It's definitely our garage. You had to be worried there for a minute. Oh, thinks he's a comedian, does he, you mate? Oh, well, he is a comedian. He's been to a school for it. A school for comics in Liverpool. It's all of a joke, Matt. Uh, what time is it when a fly overtakes a flea? Uh, I've no idea. Fly past flea. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Do you want to wear another? He's got millions. Millions. No, not really. Do you, uh, know about? Uh, yes, I've uh, met him in the Rovers. Oh, was I wearing leather pants, cashmere sweat and designer shades? No. Oh, it was me. <laughs> Are you always like this, you two? Well, it is. It's the old news. It's the old <laughs> Could anyone laugh or is it a private joke? Hang on. This is Skater. This is, uh, Tina. Uh, Fowler. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Yeah, Rovers Return, I'm a barmaid. Oh, yes. I've been in there with my husband. Spend a lot of your spare time in garages, do you? Oh, I was just on my way, as a matter of fact. I've had enough laughs for one day. <laughs> See you, Kev. See you, Mark. And uh, if you want to practice your jokes on somebody, you know where to find me. <laughs> uh, look, she just popped in out of the blue. Honest, Mum. Yeah, you take the notice. They're passionately in love. Probably she's married with six kids. Yeah, <laughs> Should we just sort out a few things, lads? I drove past here at dinner time and there was a gang of you around the car. Yeah? He was working on it. it looked like a street party to me. Then I turn up this afternoon and you've got a barmaid in here. Now, this is a business we're running, you know, not another cavern club. Well, when do you think you'll have the car ready for a test run? Tomorrow, hopefully. Take it on the uh, waste ground by the side of the gas roof. Oh. Well, just make sure you get your work done first. Mm. Hello. 
signing on the dotted line, I believe, Gail and Alma. That's right. I don't give it six months myself. What? This here partnership. Do you? No. That Alma, I'll have your Gail for a mug. You mark my words. Well, we have to see, won't we? Mm. Well, I think I'll go home. Do you know, I don't know what to do with myself since I lost my job here. Oh, she's dead miserable, Phyllis, isn't she? She hasn't done me much good, has she? You are in a difficult position, Deirdre, and no mistake. But then, I suppose you could say that Ken's in a dilemma as well. Which comes first, his job or yours? Oh, he's in no doubt about that. His. Politicians and bureaucrats must not be allowed to gag the press, Deirdre. He occupies the moral high ground and I get all the stick. Afternoon, ladies. Uh, can I get you another cup of tea? Uh, well, we're just leaving, actually. Oh, well, Councillor, before you do, I've been hoping to bump into you all day. What's all this in the recorder about opening a hostel for young layabouts in Coronation Street? Have the council gone raving mad or what? They will not be layabouts, Percy. They will be homeless young people. And anyway, there's nothing definite yet. The recorder's jumped the gun. And quite right, too. We all big debt to people like your husband for keeping the public in touch with what rightly concerns us. And I'd like to think it was you that gave him the nod. Well, you think wrong, Percy. As per usual, in fact, you must hold the flipping record for getting things wrong. What did I say? She's under a lot of pressure at the moment, Mr. Sugden. Look, been upsetting someone else, have you, Mr. Sugden? I know to upset you, Sonny. All right, I'm by offering you a job. <laughs> How come everybody thinks I'm a layabout? Because you are. I'm not. Just can't get a job what suits my qualifications, that's all. Meanwhile, there I am working part-time down the petrol pumps. I think that's very noble of me, actually. What qualifications? Good looks, personality. <laughs> my God, you'll never get a job. Ah, oh, well, I can't wait till you're looking for a job. I mean, you'll be over-educated, won't you? I mean, who wants a waitress with four A-levels and a university degree? Yes, but they think Tout might need another genius, might they? Mm. So what are we doing tonight then, Curly? It's my night off. You're skin. I'm not. Yes, you are. You always ask me what I'm doing when you're skin. Oh, so that's his game, is it? Thanks for telling me, Curly. Right, I'll know next time when you ask me. Are you trying to destroy my entire social life, Curly? I'm going to the Rovers. Oh, come on, we can't go there again. It's all right when you've got something going for you. All right. So just that Tina behind the bar, she fancies me like mad. It's obvious. It's obvious to everybody. I'll see you. Oh, <laughs> she? <laughs> she ain't no. She fancies Mark. You know, Kevin's psychic. Oh, well, you'd better tell him before he gets hurt again. What? And spoil what might be a bit of fun? Don't be daft. Oh, <laughs> Are your partners then? <laughs> for better or for worse? Oh, oh, I think for better. I think Gail's done very well for herself. So have you. Oh, yes, of course. Hey, listen, you'll have to forgive me. Uh, my feet are killing me. They haven't recovered from last night. Hey, hey, hang on. The, about last night, did he seal his feet? Well, let's say he's halfway through the door. All he needs is a little push, and he'll be saying things like, where have you been all my life? I think Mike's a bit more original than that. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure. Now, what's what? this do then? Look, we'll go to a club again, shall we? Do you know, oh, I'm, I love last night. <laughs> I feel 20 years younger. <laughs> we, Audrey, it's going to be a tete a tete, not a convention. Just going to be Mike and I. What's the matter, ma'am? Honest. She'd never have gotten near Mike Baldwin if it hadn't been for me. I'll have to order another dozen loaves tomorrow morning. Bit short today. Well, that's because our girl came in for some. Probably Alma Cedric forgot to order enough. Eight twenty-five, I mean. Crikey, I didn't think I'd spent that much. Well, you have. Oh, all right, I'll take your work for it. All right, Mike. All right. Give us a packet of my cigars, will you? Sorry for me. Well, it looks like being a nice evening. Giving a bit of luck. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you're lucky tomorrow night, no. Tomorrow? Oh, you mean dinner at eight at Alma's? Why, is she likely to burn the carrots or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's you I'm thinking about, actually, Mike. I mean, if you listen carefully, you can hear Alma sprinkling in the bedroom from here. <laughs> Not to mention sharpening her claws. Oh, so that's what the noise is, is it? Right, see ya. Mm. Audrey, mm. are you trying to put my moment off Alma? Because if you are, you're going the right way about it. <laughs> Nothing's further from my mind, either. <laughs> that's me tea, I've had it. Mm. Oh, do you want anything else? No, I'm slimming anywhere. 
slimming on what you eat. I'm going to cut out suppers. That's just as well. A bowl of cornflakes and a cheese and tomato sandwich is hardly the stuff sweet dreams are made of. Me dad? I heard. Hiya, Dad. Hello, love. She wouldn't say hiya. You sound like somebody out of a western. Everybody says that. Yeah, well, they shouldn't. It's sloppy language. Um, how's your mother? Brooding. Definitely brooding. <sighs> Hello. Bad day at Black Rock. I'll tell you how bad it's been, Ken. I've had a row with the chief executive, a public dust-up with Percy Sugden, and I've had to put up with countless snide remarks, all down to you and the recorder. Well, you've survived, haven't you? Nothing in splints, as far as I can see. There are two ways out of this situation, Ken. Two? That sounds promising. What's the tea? What you can see on the table. You can either... Stop printing what whoever it is tells you. Can't do that. they are letting the paper down. Look, get him to stop telling you things then. Walk away when he approaches you. Hang up when he rings you. Or her. Is it a woman? It's my function, Deirdre, to find exclusives and print them. And that's your last word? Got to be. Right. Well, in that case... I shall just have to resign from the council before I'm as good as chucked off. Don't be silly. It's only trivial information about ordinary council matters. It's not threatening national security, for God's sake, and it should be in the public domain anyway. Politicians love to have secrets. It's a form of power. And what's revealing secrets, Ken? Doesn't that give you a kick? Make you feel powerful? That's good timing. Breakfast is just about ready. Where's Mum? Having a lie in. She was upset last night, wasn't she? The other counsellors, you think that she's getting their secrets so she can tell you and you can put them in your paper, don't they? Well, she isn't doing anything of the sort. Your mum is a very principled lady. They don't think so, do they? She's got a clear conscience, Tracy, so she's nothing to be ashamed of and she can hold her head up. Sounds easy when you say it. Oh, I thought you were having a lie in. Oh, I wasn't asleep. I've been awake half the night wrestling with this situation and one thing's for sure every time you get something in that paper of yours that the council wants kept secret they're going to take it for granted that you got it from me i can't win like i said last night maybe i should resign oh, let's face it you wouldn't exactly be heartbroken if i did would you well it's your decision love. but i'll support you whichever way you go i don't think you should resign mum you haven't done anything wrong I know that, Tracy, love. Other people don't. That's the trouble. Well, they say, if you can't stand the heat, then you shouldn't be in the kitchen. <laughs> she didn't get that from me. Double egg and bacon, please, Gail. I love it. You know, sometimes we should all go vegetarian. Come in here, clamouring for a nice green salad. Oh, you've got no chance round here. Still, that'll be the breakfast rush finished now. Not from where I'm standing, Alma. Not that'll be your last fry up, and then it'll be all toast and coffee from there on in. Look, uh, while it's uh, while it's a bit quiet, uh, I think uh, I think I'll just pop out for an hour. Where else? Where to? Well, you know what? You know I'm entertaining Mike Bowen tonight. Well, there's just one or two things I want to get you see. A chair and a whip, Alma. <laughs> I mean, that's what they're using circuses, isn't it, for fending off wild animals? Oh, no, I'm sure he's quite a gentleman. Oh, well, what I've heard must be wrong, then. Oh, no, I'm sure he knows how to behave. And mind you, you know, I wouldn't want it to be too tame. I don't think you need worry about that. Good. Hold it. Hello. Hello, Alf, do us a favour, will you? Stick a bottle of that champagne in your fridge. I'll call back about, oh, 6, 6.30. Should be nice and chilled by then. You're on. Champagne now, is it? Well, I can't go to Alma's housewarming bin party empty-handed, can I? Housewarming? It's not what I call a housewarming. As far as I can make out, you're the only one invited. Now, you don't know that for sure. Yes, I do. Tim, she's trying to warm up, not a house. Anyway, it's not a house. It's only a flat. <laughs> Just a thing for Alma, a flat suits her figure. <laughs> I'll have to bow to your superior knowledge. I don't know that well, as yet. Anyway, do that for us, mate, will right. Oh, I'll tell you what, a box of chocolates, eh? Mm -hmm. uh, you got the old feminine now, Al. Tell him what sort of chocolates you think Alma would like, and, uh, well, that'll do nicely. Mm -hmm. See ya. So Hard centres, I should think. You know, the way you're going on, anybody would think you were jealous. Jealous? Me? Who won? Of Alma, of course. All right, so Mike is interested in her. I thought that's what you wanted a bit of matchmaking. Uh, a bit of social life. Oh. That's what I wanted. Mr Roberts, you know I've got some time off owing to me. Yeah, go on. 
Well, would it be all right if I leave early today, about five o'clock? Well, I suppose so. Yeah, I can manage. It's just that Kevin and Mark are trying the car out tonight. Oh, you're another that wants some excitement in your life, are you? You're as bad as Audrey. Well, when you're married, you need a bit of excitement. Oh, speak for yourself. How was to? Hi, Kel. Hi. Oh, Tina? Yeah? Uh, just off to work? Yeah. Does it get boring working behind that bar every night? No, it's all right. You have a few laughs. Anyway, I don't work every night. Yeah, I was just about to ask. You must get a couple of nights off. Of course I do. Yeah. Uh, Tina, are you uh, are you working tonight? Uh, what day is it? Wednesday. Hey, no, it's one of my nights off tonight. Oh, uh, do, you, uh, do you fancy coming out? You know, uh, going to the pictures or something? No, not really. I'll see you then. Yeah. So, that's it. The famous trailer your old fella's been promising us. It <laughs> looks a bit clapped out if you ask me. All right, get us there. Hey, you won't. Could be more dodgy getting that to the track than racing this thing once ah, we're there. so what? He's worried about a bit of danger, eh? We, uh... I'm glad you said that. Hey, give me my money. What for? I should get a bit worried about this bang racing. I think I'm gonna break my neck or something. <laughs> She's not worried. She's hopeful. No, <laughs> sorry, Kev. She thinks you're dead dependable. So look, give her a ring, tell her we know what we're doing. Tell her to leave it to cool and Kev, eh? <laughs> anyway, since you're worried about a bit of danger, does that mean I'm the driver? Hey, no, does it, eh? We'll sort that out once we do a few trials. Till then, I'm the captain, you're still the first mate. Sally told me she was your first mate. Last as well, she said. <laughs> She's so blatant with it, stupid woman. She's pulling out all the stops to seduce my balls with. I don't think she has to work at it, ma'am. I mean, from what I've heard, no woman is safe. No attractive woman, perhaps. <laughs> I'm gonna be all right then. Oh, you and her, we're friends these days. Look, I'm friendly. It's her. Oh, I know. Oh, oh. oh. Hello, Hello. Oh, I'm sorry I've been so long, Gail. Yes, well, so am I, as it happens. I mean, we've been rushed off our feet, me and Christy. Well, never mind, your labours have not been in vain. I've got to smash and dress. Hey, what do you think? It's very short. Well, I must say, I wouldn't wear it on. <laughs> no, well, I mean, you do have to the legs for it, I grant you. Well, look, I'm just going to pop up the stairs again. I'll, I'll, I'll be back in the Oh, sh cheeky article. I mean, honest. She's dead calm. I mean, it's one thing knowing how to set your stall out for a fella, but another saying, roll up, come on, everything's going cheap. Sausage, beans oh. and chips twice. Yeah, that's us, love. Oh, Cheers. Well. Thank you. <coughs> that? If music be the food of love, this is brass band time. <laughs> you are. Ah, oh, forget it, it's just an epigram. Listen, how are you going on with that, Tina? 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 What made you mention her? Oh, it's just you, whittering on about love. Anyway, you've not stopped talking about her lately. You said she fancies you. Ah, but she does. No doubt about it. No doubt about it at all. Is that all you've come in for? Yeah, there's a panic on it, Rover's kitchen. Uh, you and Kev be coming in this dinner. No, I'm working through, so's Kev. Oh, so that means Mark won't be coming in either. His Mark's too young for you two. And give over chasing him. Me? I have never chased a man in my life. Yeah, I'll bet. Kevin and Mac are working through because we're going to try out the banger racing this hey, evening. Hey, that sounds like a bit of fun and you're yeah. going, are you? Yeah, you can't keep me away. You know, that'd be brilliant, that. I love that kind of thing, me. Right, I I'll be seeing you then. All right, see you, Tina. Bye. See you later, bye. Oh, hello, Tina. Honestly, you should see the frock that Alma Cedric put. She's got no taste. Hello, Ivy. Hello. Oh, she's still after ball win then, is she? I couldn't demean myself, me. She's making so cheap. Oh, wishes well, him with a chance then, because he loves a bargain, does oh. Mark Baldwin. But men hate a woman that's obvious, don't they, Alfred? I'm saying nothing. Whatever I say will be wrong. I'm just glad that you and me, Alf, aren't going to this do. Right. Oh, quite right. <laughs> I mean, he could take a disco in again, couldn't he? Dancing all the way through the night. <laughs> that's no good to you two at your age, is it? and let all and sundry be sarky, eh? I mean, a man is supposed to stick up for his wife. That's what husbands are for. Hello. Ah, oh, looks like you've been busy this morning. Yeah, I had some letters to write. These letters, uh, they include a letter of resignation from the council. Make a story for you, would it? Look, love. You seem to think that I'm enjoying your dilemma. Honestly, I'm not. And I'd like to help, but I don't see how I can. <laughs> there is one very obvious way you could help, Ken. Get me off the hook right away. Oh, you mean divulge my source of information? Well, I gave the person... A spy, who... you mean? Look, I just happen to believe that the facts that are printed are facts the public needs to know. And so does my source of information. 
and I promise I keep my source's identity secret. That I wouldn't reveal it under any circumstance. Even though it's me that's getting hurt? I made a promise. What about the promises you made me when we got married? Now, this is a professional matter. It's nothing to do with our personal lives. <laughs> you can't separate the two, Ken. You can't split life up into nice, tidy little compartments. Well, I grant you it's difficult, you being a counsellor, me being a journalist. But I can't do what you're asking. Right. Well, here's a statement for you, Ken. I'm not resigning. I know there's plenty of people who think I should get out, but I'm not doing. I'm going to go to the planning committee tonight, as usual. I'm sticking it out, and you can quote me. time being, yeah. I've just finished for day. It's going to be a nice evening by the looks of it. Yeah. Too nice for pictures, really. Yeah. Pardon? You can start clearing up now, Christine. There'll not be much doing. Oh, it's fatal saying that. Hiya, Phyllis. Hello, love. I thought I'd come and see you all. Cup of tea on the house. Hey, don't let boss catch you. The boss? My senior partner, you mean. She's upstairs, titivating. When isn't she? She's more plaster on her face than they're using them new council flats. Mind you, when a building's falling down, that's when you do most decorating. Yeah, but it's an important night tonight. Mm. We've got a chap coming to dinner. Who? Mike Baldwin. Hey, do you know what she's giving him? Oysters. Oh, they're well known. I've dizzy what's its names. You know, for getting fellas going. Yeah, but do they work? Well, they did on my old man when he was a young fella. Then as he got older, they didn't work. Then I found out he was slipping them to cat. <laughs> You're not telling me that Deirdre's not passing all this confidential counsel stuff? That's exactly what I'm telling oh, you. Oh, come off it, Ken. Look, she comes home from eating, she drops a little hint there, little clue somewhere else. Well, I'm telling you, I've got some mates on the council and they're none too pleased with her. Yeah, I know that, and they're wrong. As you are. Listen, if Kenny says that's a position, it's good enough for me. Now, in my experience, Kenneth is an honourable man. There's a very true saying, honest walk, you molly pants. What does that mean exactly? Eh? Well, it means him that laughs last, laughs best. Yeah, well, anyway, Alf, next time you meet these old council mates of yours, just tell them to watch their tongues. Look, quite right, because you're an expert on libel laws, aren't you? It's got nothing to do with you. It's a free country. Now, now come on. You think different. Come on, gentlemen, there's no call to lose your temper. And I'd remind you that Mr. Roberts mustn't get himself all worked up. I mean, with this ticker, anything could happen. Percy! Hey, don't excite yourself now. Deep breaths, that's the ticket. Anyway, where are you getting these stories from? That's my business. Yeah, the funny people, these press willers, aren't they? They love telling other people's secrets, but when it comes to their own, they get a bit shirty. Yeah. Oh, life's too short. Uh, have you got my champagne, mate? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh come on! Speed it! Come on, Red! Speed it! Oh, oh, Check your nose! That's a really dodgy cop. Hey, up! Look at him, he's actually fancy him. I didn't believe him, though, are they? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. What are you doing here? What Curly brought me? Is that Mark driving? Oh, no. Pointless. Pointless is cult of speed. Hey, it's great, isn't it? All right. It's definitely Mark's chance. It's so obvious. It's not so Curly, is it? Yeah, well, it soon will be. <laughs> Poor old Curly, eh? Oh, champagne. I love it. <laughs> I think we deserve it. You know, it's a nice place you've got here. Very cosy. Well, I mean, I haven't got everything exactly the way I wanted yet, but... Oh, here we go. <laughs> Here's to you. <laughs> and to the flat. And I hope you'll be very happy here. Oh. A bit lively, isn't it? Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Mm. Am I the first to arrive, Emma? Well, I had, um, I had thought of asking another couple, but, um, actually something cropped up, so there's, um, there's just the two of us. Well, it's okay for me. <laughs> Cheers. You know, you look great. Absolute knockout. Oh, thank you. I, um, I hope you're hungry. Do you, um, do you like oysters? Oysters? Or oh, anything like that suits me down to the ground, seafood. So you've got the sea in my blood. I come from a long line of pirates. I see this is going to be one of those memorable evenings. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Hello, Deirdre. I wasn't sure you'd be coming. Why would I stop away, George? I think we're all here, in which case we'll come to order and start. Item one. Are we all agreed? The minutes are a correct record of the last meeting. Mr. Chairman, before we go any further, I want to move a resolution. You can't do that at this stage. As a point of order, Mr. Chairman, as a point of order... Not now, ma'am. I move, Mr. Chairman, that Mrs. Councillor Barlow be asked to leave this meeting. Yes. 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 Knowing full well that if she stops here, we might as well have our meetings in the street. Oh, because yes. it'll be all over that sheet, her husband runs. Mr. Chairman. I move a vote be taken. It's totally out of order, this, Mr. Chairman. We can't conduct the vital business of this committee knowing there's no confidentiality. He's accusing Councillor Barlow, but I want to know what proof he's got. The proof's what's in the paper, man. Order, please. Mr. Chairman, you've no need to put it to the vote. If that's the feeling of the committee. It is. Yeah. Right, then I'll leave you to get on with it. And I'd like it minuted that I leave this meeting under protest. Mm. Marvellous. Mm. I've got steaks to follow. <laughs> You're spoiling me. And you know what? I like it. You know, I, um, I had the feeling you'd like oysters. I, um, I don't know why. Because you looked at me and you mm. thought, on the outside is a hard shell, but inside, a pearl. <laughs> is, uh, is that what I thought? Subconsciously, deep down. Mm. <laughs> oh, would you, uh, would you like a drop of Tabasco sauce? Mm. I never say no to a bit of hot stuff. And I like a girl that's willing to take a chance. How do you mean? Well, these oysters. No R in the month. Oh, yes, I mean, they used to say that, didn't they? But this, uh, this chap down the market said that's all gone by the board now. They're, um, they're Portuguese, by the way. Portuguese? In that case, buenas noches, senorita. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you think we should head back to town? Now? Yeah, I thought we'd get the bus and go for the Chinese. Oh, I don't really fancy a Chinese tonight. We can have something else if you want. Oh, thanks anyway, but I'm not really that hungry. No, I think I'll see what Mark and everyone else is doing. Right. Are you going back to Coronation Street? Oh, near enough. Why, you ain't seen him what I live? Nah, nah, that's me. Hey, you've not fell out, have you? Never fell in. <laughs> oh, never mind, Curly. She weren't your type, you know. I'd have told you that if you'd asked me. Anyway, she fancies Mark. She was only using me. I don't mind women using me as long as they use me in a different way. Oh, now I know what you're saying. Oh, I'm gone! Uh, Take it easy! She's not bad. Us girls are like that. Hidden talents. Oh, that meal was fantastic. <laughs> not just a pretty face, are you? Well, I'm glad you enjoyed the evening. Well, the evening hasn't finished yet. Unless you're trying to get rid of me. Oh, not anything but. Mind you, it stands to reason you'd be a good cook. I mean, you're a pro. You're a businesswoman. You run your own cafe. Got a staff to contend with, same as I have. Anything wrong? No, no. See, you know all about running a business. The aggravations of problems. But to me, business is a means to an end. The good life. Don't you reckon? Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm. Nice clothes, good car, good food, good wine. <laughs> A little bit of fun. You sure you're all right? No, I was, I was just, um, no, I, I, was just, I was just feeling a bit funny. <laughs> that a bit of champagne. Yeah. Put your feet up on the settee. There you go. Let's uh, take your shoes off. Do you know, I think, um, I think I'm being a, feeling a bit sick. I, 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 are you all right? Me? I feel fine. Do you know what? Mm -hmm. I think those oysters are beginning to work. <laughs> Yes, so do I. See, there's not even so much as a gent in it. I wasn't worried about that, was I? Hey, Mark. 
I was more worried about you putting the dent in yourself. Oh. You're brilliant, Sam. Ah, there you go. You yeah, see? well, I'm starving, so what are we going to do about it? Well, we could call it the chippy and take it back to our house. Is that all right with you, Mark? Yeah, fine. Oh, I thought you would have uh, been taking Tina home. I reckon it was all on there, Bob. Thought it'd be a toy boy. <laughs> Come on, man, they're really rotten. I forget sometimes what a shocking lot you fellas really are. Um, must have been one of them oysters. <laughs> it could be. Mind you, I feel fine. Oh, well, well, I, I should probably be all right in um, in half an hour, though. So. Oh, no, early night. That's the best thing for you. Uh, I'll get out from under your feet. Oh, no, no, don't, don't rush. Um, ha have a brandy. Oh, I couldn't do that to you, love. I can see you're suffering. No, uh, I'll get out of your way and let you get the pig. Mind you, it's been nice. Very, very nice. See you soon. Yes, that, um, that would be nice. Yeah. Nice cup of tea. That's what you want. See ya. I get those two mixed up. It's Denise the dark one. Oh, hello, Deirdre. I didn't realise you were in. Hi, Mum. Hi, love. Enjoy the film? Yeah, it was okay. I hope you said thank you to Auntie Emily for taking you. Of course I did. Oh, is the water hot? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm going up in the bath. Oh, your committee meeting finished early, I take it. Well, for me it did. In fact, I left before it even got started. My fellow committee members made it very clear they didn't want me to stay. Oh, no. Oh, yes. This is Ken's stories in the recorder. Well, I hope he's pleased with himself. He doesn't know yet. He's out somewhere working, I suppose. Oh, God, I wish he'd been there when they threw me out. Well, say threw me out. I didn't wait for them to vote. I walked out. Oh, you must have felt Oh, I did. And then coming home, something struck me that made me feel even worse. It's not me that's been telling Ken what goes on in that committee. That means it must be one of that lot that was booing me and hissing me tonight. Well, I suppose that's possible. It's more than possible, Emily. God, I wish I knew who Ken's mole was. But I'll tell you this. I'm going to find out. And when I do... Long meeting tonight. Yes. There's a very interesting letter in there. Good. If you use it, well, they won't be able to blame your wife this time. There was a row at the start of the meeting. Most people wanted her out. So she went. I see. Well, as you say, they won't be able to blame Deirdre. Can I keep this? No, you better copy it now. But when you print it, they'll be trying even harder to find the leak. Does that mean you want to stop? No, I'll, I'll carry on, but I think it's going to get tricky. And there's more from Weatherfield tomorrow at 12 midday. Coming up next on Plus, Betty is gobsmacked in Emmerdale.